People of the internet, welcome to Modern Day Debate. Tonight we are debating, are Quranic values good? And we are starting right now. So I am Kaz, host of the Atheist Edge. And tonight we have Apostate Prophet and Nuria versus Rashid and Perfect Dawah. Each person is going to have six minutes for a team, a uh, total of 12 minutes for their opening statements. And then we're going to have uh, 40 minutes of open discussion and then 35 minutes of Q&A. Uh, Perfect Dawah and Rashid, as the affirmative, will have uh, the initial opening so i will turn it over to them i believe perfect dawa you will have the first word so at your first word i will start the clock your the floor is all yours all right yeah thank you very much <clears throat> as a converted muslim i am definitely a much better person than before and i believe that islamic uh, teachings were not only beautiful and necessarily for the past but for today and for the future before converting to Islam, I supported punishment for crimes, but Islam taught me that we are all sinners and we have no right to judge or punish people, but it is only God, uh, God's, uh, God that has the right to judge and punish sinners. <clears throat> Quran chapter 88, verse 25 and 26. Indeed to us is their return, then indeed upon us is their account. <clears throat> I believe Islam will guide us to a world without any hate and fight, only peace, a world where only righteous people live in. Quran chapter 28, verse 5. And we wanted to confer favor upon those who were oppressed on earth and make them leaders and make them inheritors on the earth. These, uh, these are some of, te uh, some of the teachings of Quran that has changed me and many others to be uh, better people. Quran chapter 42, verse 40. And the retribution for an evil act is an evil one like it, but whoever pardons and makes a reconciliation, his reward is due from Allah. Indeed, he does not like wrongdoers. Chapter 3, verse 134. Who spend in the cause of Allah during seeds and hardship and who restrain anger and who pardon the people and Allah loves the doors of good. Chapter 42, verse 43. And whoever is patient and forgives, indeed, that is for uh, of the matters requiring determination. Chapter 16, verse 126. And if you punish, punish with an equivalent of that which uh, with which you were harmed. But if you are patient, it is better for those who are patient. Chapter 23, verse 96. O Muhammad, repel evil in the best manner. We, all, uh, we are well aware of uh, all that they say about you. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, you do, not uh, you do not do evil to those who do evil to you, but you deal with them with forgiveness and kindness. He said, the pleasure you get in forgiveness, you never get it in revenge. Ali radiallahu, the closest companion of uh, the Prophet said, hate no one, no matter how much they have wronged you and live humbly no matter how wealthy you become think positively no matter how hard life is give much even if you have been given little keep in touch with the ones you uh, who have uh, forgotten you and forgive who has wronged you uh, hossein radiallah grandson of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him the most merciful person is the one who forgives when he has he is able to take revenge. Imam Shafi, always hate what is wrong, but do not hate the one who errs. Hate sin with all your heart, but forgive and have mercy on the sinner. Criticize speech, but respect the speaker. Our job is to wipe out the disease, not the patient. Ali radiallahu wrote to his governor of Egypt, Malik. He said, Malik, the worst people for you must be those who try to reveal people's mistakes and sins because people make mistakes and sins and the governor is the one who must cover them. Do not try to find out people's mistakes because your duty is to fix the problems that leads people to bad deeds and it is God's right to judge people, not yours. Cover people's mistakes and sins as much as you can so that God covers yours. Quran chapter 2, verse 177. Righteousness is not to turning your face towards the east or the west. Rather, the righteous are those who believe in Allah the last day 
and uh, the angels, the books, and the prophets who gives charity out of their cherished wealth to relatives, orphans, the poor, needy, travelers, beggars, and for freeing captives who establish prayer, pay all tax, and um, keep the pledges they make, and who are patient in the times of suffering, uh, uh, adversary, and uh, in the uh, heat of battle. It is they who are true in, in faith. And it is they who are mindful of Allah. Chapter 4, verse 75. And who, and how could you refuse to fight in the cause of God and for oppressed men, women, and children? Yes. Sorry? Just one minute left. All right, okay. And uh, how could you refuse to fight in the cause of Allah for God, uh, sorry, in God and for oppressed men, women, and children who cry out, Lord, Lead us towards freedom out of this land of oppressors. Uh, through your grace, give us a uh, protector and helper. S chapter 16, verse 90. Indeed, Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded. Chapter 4, verse uh, 58. Indeed, Allah commands you to return things entrusted to you to their rightful owners and when you judge people uh, between people judge with fairness uh, what a noble commandment from allah to you surely allah is all hearing all seeing yeah thank you very much <clears throat> all right rashid at your first word i'll start your clock yes sure thank you very much um yes my position on whether the values of the quran are good or not is based mainly on their practical and beneficial aspect and by this i mean the values portrayed in the quran as e whether they are good for humanity or whether or whether they can be implemented in a way that advances well-being so in this discussion i will be of course arguing in the affirmative namely that quranic values are in fact good in of themselves and also good in advancing our well-being now does it does this mean that uh, these values cannot be arrived at without the Quran? Of course not. Do they contradict what we perceive or what we have arrived at as good values today? I would say no, they do not. Um, so during this discussion, I'm going to give several examples, but uh, in my uh, introduction, I would like to stick to some few examples as time does not permit me to go into all of them. But to simplify, to simplify matters, you can, of course, uh, categorize uh, you can break them down into different categories, such as those values which are spiritual and those ones which are non-spiritual. In my introduction, I'm going to only be, f I'm going to touch on the non-spiritual, uh, non i.e. the practical, and then later on, if uh, time allows it, you, during the discussion, I will come into the spiritual. So when you're talking about different values within the Quran, you have, of course, the constitution or the legislative uh, values, and then you have the societal and the community ones, and you also have the familial, the one that have to do with family, and you have the financials and the behavior uh, values. So uh, for me personally, I do believe that when you look at those values, you can clearly see that the Quran does, in fact, advocate for good values, and also it advocates those values as a ways to advance a, the, the well-being of the human race. So in terms of the constitution, for example, or the legislative, the Quran commands to justice, excellence, fairness, and equanimity. It, pro, it prohibits corruption, oppression, and aggression. In fact, according to the Quran, the primary reason why prophets and messengers were sent and given revelations was in order for people to establish justice and fairness upon the earth. Look in chapter, chapter 57 to find that. Uh, the Quran instructs us to stand up as witnesses for justice and fairness, even if it is against our own selves, our parents or relatives, be we poor or rich, and also not to lead with our desires in, uh, when we are rendering justice. It calls for us to be impartial in our dealings. The Quran calls for the implementation of law to be based on haq, and by haq it means laws that are transparent and clear, in their intent to serve and protect the well-being of the people, not laws with the intent of favoring those who have made them and to deceive and beguile the people by robbing them of their God-given rights and freedoms. In terms of, of its communal or societal, the Quran commands the community to take care of those people who are un 
unable or incapable of taking care of themselves, such as orphans, the poor, the needy, the beggar, the neighbor, the traveler, the companion, and so forth. The Quran com commands no less than the highest level of goodness, which is Ihsan, and it commands it when it comes to the treatment of these groups of people. The same level of goodness that we are required to accord our parents. When dealing with orphans, the Quran commands that we deal with the orphans in the most respectable manner. It instructs us to always speak to them with kindness in Surah Nisa, to always take them into consideration and always make sure that they are well cared for. The Quran commands us not to take a life which God has forbidden to be slain, i.e. the life of an innocent person. But it does permit retaliatory measures uh, for the one who has been wrong. But yet even in that, often the Quran recommends a path of forgiveness. It also values and calls for the emancipation of those who are in chains, i.e. slaves and captives. It calls for us to be neighborly with our neighbors. And in terms of its family-related values, the Quran commands us to take care of our parents and to give uh, our near relatives their rights to treat them with excellence, ihsan. When the, parents become, when the parents become of old age, the Quran commands us to take care of them in, th in such a way that, we are, not, we, that we, are we are not supposed to be harsh in our communication with them, meaning that we are not supposed to even say a word of disrespect to them or shun them. Instead, the Quran commands us or instructs us to speak to them in a respectable manner and to lower our wing of tenderness and gentility, i.e. rahma to them, and to pray for them even when they might say or do something that we might not approve of. Regarding marriage, which is also under the family, the Quran commands us not to come close to adultery. When seeking marriage, the Quran instructs us to seek spouses with whom we are going to find tranquility and peace, i.e. sakina, and which foster marriages, which One foster minute. affection, mawadda, and gentility, uh, and tenderness, rahma. In terms of financials, the Quran instructs us to be moderate when we do spend, not to be extravagant in such a way that we may end up bankrupting ourselves, not, uh, in order to completely refrain from giving anything at all, but to find a balance between these two extremes. In businesses, the Quran commands, us, commands those engaging in business to be fair in their dealings and to give full weight and measure in the manner that is equitable, not to cheat or exhibit dishonesty with their customers. Now, I could go on and on and on, but unfortunately... I'm running out of time, but during the discussion, I will come in, in uh, with more uh, more values, inshallah. Okay, that's it. All right. So thank you so much, Rashid, for your opening statement. And I will go ahead and reset the clock. And I believe, uh, Pastor Prophet, you were going to take the first uh, part of your teams. That's right, yeah. All right. So it's your first word. I will start your clock. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, for being here. Thank you for uh, arranging the debate, and thanks, everyone, for joining. Also, congratulations to uh, Nuria, who's having her first uh, debate here. Uh, very good to see. Um, I want to uh, address uh, the two Muslim debaters. Um, I want to quickly say, when it comes to uh, the opening speech of Perfect Dawah, I th um, it looks like it had nothing to do with Islam. Uh, as it really is. It was his own interpretation of what Islam is supposed to be. And it's ironic because the debate is to, uh, supposed to be about Quranic values, but he mostly uh, gave examples. Uh, after referring to the Quran several times, he gave examples of uh, people um, in Islamic tradition based on sources that are completely uh, ambiguous. So uh, sources that don't actually represent uh, Muslim ideas and Quranic values at all. If I asked the average Muslim about uh, the things that Perfect Dawah, Dawah listed, they would have no clue what uh, I'm talking about. Um, when it comes to Rashid's opening statement, I think that, uh, it, that, that was more close to um, what Islam actually is. But uh, unfortunately, there is a problem here, which is... Um, the the solutions or um, the ideas that he presents based on which he argues that Quranic values are good are very vague. For example, he speaks of justice and of being uh, good and being against corruption and being fair. You can't say that no matter what position you are in. That's the nice thing about language and about uh, the subjectivity of morals. The Nazi regime also uh, considered themselves very just and very fair. And they thought they are fighting for justice. They are against corruption, against evil. The Soviet Union uh, had the same thing. It was my, one of their main propaganda uh, lines, actually. So every regime, every evil, every good can have those same statements. What matters is that we look at the, the actual policies, at the actual thoughts, the actual ideas and acts to understand um, what these values actually are. 
if we look at the Quran, since we are talking about Quranic values, uh, the Quran says in chapter 5, verse 51, that it's uh, forbidden for Muslims to befriend Jews and Christians. It says in chapter 8, verse 55, that um, the worst of creatures are those who disbelieve in Allah, and the best of creatures are those who believe in him. It repeats the same notion again in chapter 98, verse 6. Uh, it says in chapter 9, verse 29, very clearly, that this is a verse that I think everybody should always remember, uh, that Muslims are supposed to fight those who do not believe in Allah and his messenger and who do not adopt Islam as a religion until they are humiliated and pay jizya, which is protection money for disbelievers in an Islamic state. Um, the Quran says in chapter 60, verse 4, in a fictional um report of Abraham that Abraham said to people um, hate has arisen, arisen between us and the Quran points out that this is the perfect attitude by Muslims. Abraham states that as long as people disbelieve in uh, in Allah uh, there will be hate between us and uh, animosity and this is good according to the Quran. So the Quran doesn't teach uh, forgiveness and tolerance and whatever it is by all means. It teaches that there should be hate between those who believe and those who disbelieve uh, aside from also fighting them. Um, when it comes to, there are of course many different values, like uh, how the Quran actually treats women. Um, you could talk about, uh, I'm sure Nuria has a lot to say about, about that, but the Quran actually authorizes men to beat their wives, uh, it authorizes men to take captives in war and to have sex with them, to buy and sell them, uh, all kinds of things. When it comes to Muhammad, in authentic sources, Muhammad said that he was sent to fight the people until they believe in Allah. He promised to expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula, so he definitely didn't have didn't have an understanding of a, a diverse society. Uh, he commanded that apostates, people who leave Islam, should be executed, which is a command that scholars after him unanimously agreed upon and practiced forever. Um, he sent people out to destroy polytheist temples and praised them for following his orders and for destroying a temple called Adul Halasa in Yemen and massacring everyone uh, they found there. This actually happened. He said, w won't you relieve me from Dhul Halasa, Bukhari 3823. And uh, one of his men went uh, with an army, destroyed the temple, killed everyone around there, came back and Muhammad said, uh, Allah bless you. You know. Um, in, in the Muslim, in Muslim sources, it is a very authentic uh, belief, uh, globally believed that Muslims will fight the Jews before the end of time and kill them wherever they find One them. One minute. And this is a largely accepted Islamic belief seen among the end time prophecies. Muslims grow up, I grew up believing that in the future, and maybe in the near future, a time will come, maybe in my lifetime, where I will have to fight and kill Jews, because that's what the sources tell me, that's what Muhammad said. Um, there's so much more. Quran 33 verse 50 says that you can have sex with, uh, that you can take um, you know, uh, captives in war, uh, which Muhammad himself permits. We have multiple reports of Muhammad himself buying and selling slaves, uh, including female uh, slaves, and so on. Uh, based on many of these outdated and extremely uh, detestable values, which we see today practiced in Islamic societies, which is why Islamic societies are so backward and uh, very low in terms of human development and peace, I would say Quranic values are definitely not good. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Prophet. And we will go ahead and kick it over to Nuria for her opening statement. And the floor is all yours. Your first word. Hi, it's great to be here. Uh, thanks, Modern Day Debates, for hosting this. And a massive thank you to AP for tag teaming with me. And obviously, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our opponents, Rashid and Perfect Dawa. Um, I'd like to start by commending Rashid and Perfect Dawa because they sit here today either really bravely or some would argue completely selfless and willing to commit intellectual suicide by aiming to defend the indefensible. That is the Quran. And to defend it in front of the world on YouTube, I mean, this is the very book that inspired the likes of ISIS, Boko Haram, and bin Laden. So kudos to the both of you. I couldn't do it. The question is whether Quranic values are good. I think it's important to start with the basics so we can all infer that good refers to something intrinsically positive and of value, right? 
According to the Oxford Dictionary, good refers to something that is morally right, so righteousness or a benefit or advantage. When we start to hold the Quran up to scrutiny and up to today's standards, a very dark picture begins to emerge. Um, um, yeah, sorry. So much so that the Quran actually doesn't even meet the basic requirements of Article 1 of the United Nations Human Rights Charter. In fact, the Quran is in breach of more than half of the articles. The Quran and Islam are against fundamental laws of our modern world. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights consists of 30 articles and was created in a post-war climate. It's been ratified by most countries as accepted universal law for an individual, regardless of geography, race, ethnicity, nationality, color, sex, age, at any given time. Even thousands of years from now, the fundamental laws could still apply because they are universal and absolute. Yet, Muslim member states of the OIC, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, created their own declaration in 1990 called the Cairo Declaration, as an Islamic response to the far superior man-made universal laws that we've thankfully adopted. So let's run through a couple. And bear in mind, the Quran considers itself to be a clear book of guidance. References are Surah Maida, or the chapter of the table, 515, and the chapter of the cow, Surah Bakra, 2-2. So Article 1 of the United Nations Human Rights Charter says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Quran 291, slay the unbelievers wherever you find them. Cue the usual Muslim context argument here. Quran 2, 223, your wives are a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how you will. This basically means men own women. You own your woman like she's a piece of your land or property, and you can approach her as if she were chattel. This encourages entitlement and marital rape, to say the least. Quran 4, 3, marry women of your choice, 2, 3, or 4. Men can marry up to four wives. Women can only marry one man. Absolutely no equality. Quran 424, also forbidden to you are women already married except those captives and slaves whom your right hand possess. This basically permits Muslim men to take captive women as sex slaves. Let that sink in. This is slavery even worse than indentured servitude in the Bible. It's sexual slavery. Perpetual rape when and as your Muslim master orders it. We're taught about the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade, but what about the Arab slave trade? Have you ever looked into why Zanzibar was a safe slave trading hotspot? The trans-Saharan slave trade was going on from the mid 7th century to the 20th century, but we're rarely taught about it. Arab Muslims in North and East Africa sold captured Africans to the Middle East. They worked in fields as teachers or harem guards, which is why the castration of male slaves was commonly practiced. This was happening seven centuries before Europeans explored the continent and 10 centuries before West Africans were sold across Atlantic to America. So Quran 411, the male shall have equal portion of two females. Again, an in inheritance, a woman receives only half compared to a man, no equality. Quran 2282, and call to witness from among your men, two witnesses, and if two men cannot be found, then a man and a woman. In a court, a woman's testimony is half. How can someone be a Muslim and a feminist at the same time? It beggars belief when the Quran is as explicit as this. Your word and worth is literally half of a man. Okay, Article 2 entitles everyone to all rights and freedoms without distinction of any kind. Quran 98.6, verily those who disbelieve from among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians and polytheists will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. Quran 4.101, the disbelievers are an open enemy to you, discriminatory and hate speech. Article 4 states, no one should be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery in the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Quran 869, but now enjoy what you took in war, lawful and good. Quran 2432, marry those among you who are single and those have fit, um, who are fit among your male slaves and your female slaves. No matter what sect of Islam you follow, the Quran is sacrosanct. The Quran claims it's the final, infallible, eternal and perfected word of God. It's also important to note Sharia, Islamic law, is derived from prescriptions found in the Quran. Sharia is the final interpretation, the scholarly consensus, ijma, of the Quran and Sunnah. So when you think of hands and feet being chopped off after the Friday prayer in Saudi, bear in mind where the source of that comes from. I'd like to ask Rashid and Perfect Dawa a few things. Why does the Quran allow child marriage? There's no upper or lower limit set for marriage in the Quran. Secondly, why does the Quran incite murder towards disbelievers? Thirdly, why does it call for barbaric punishments like amputations? Doesn't it show that's nothing more than a man-made product of its time? 
And to everyone who thinks domestic abuse is wrong and a crime, if you read the chapter of women, Surah Nisa, it's simple to see that Quran 434 commands domestic violence. Does this sound divinely inspired to you or just perversely man-made? The Quran is an outdated, archaic, 7th century war manual. It's a mm, reflection right. of Bedouin society enshrining domestic violence, sex slavery, child marriage, misogyny, consanguinity, unilateral divorce for men, unequal inheritance, predefined gender norms, incitement to murder, hate speech, threats to life, and honor-based violence perpetuated by hijab and subservience with the onus of modesty culture being predominantly on women. So no, I would like to posit today Quranic values are not good. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Nuria. And that concludes our opening discussion time. So we will go ahead and kick it into the open discussion now. I'm sorry, opening statements. So uh, we will kick it into the open discussion now. But before we do that, I want to let you know, folks, especially if it's your first time here with us at Modern Day Debate, that we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And we want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. So if you have a question or a comment for one of tonight's debaters, please fire into the old live chat and be sure to tag me at Modern Day Debate. Super chats will go to the top of the list. All we ask is that you please keep it civil, attack the argument and not the person as insults will not be read. And that goes for the general discourse in the live chat as well. Please keep it civil and please attack the argument and not the person. Our guests are linked in the description below, whether you're listening on YouTube or via the podcast. So if you like what you're hearing, if you love what you're hearing, please click those links right now and check them out. Also, uh, Perfect Dawa is going to be hosting a uh, after show immediately after the show. So if you want to continue the conversation on his channel, please go ahead and check that out. And then a little bit later after that, I will be hosting another after show as well. And hit the subscribe button because we have plenty more debates coming your way that you don't want to miss. And I just want to let you know about DebateCon 2 coming up on Saturday, November 19th in Plano, Texas. The, li the link in the description below is for the tickets. Those are still on sale. They are as low as 25 bucks. And there's a fundraiser, too, to help it get off the ground. We are at 27% of our goal, and we have 19 days left. So please, if you love debates, if you are a fiend for them like I am, then you might want to consider supporting that goal. So with that, we will go ahead and kick it into the open discussion. Let me just go ahead and put uh, 45 minutes on the clock and with that um i did get a chat from uh zagros he wanted to ask that you guys uh spend some time if you could steel manning each other's positions so if that is at all possible if the affirmative wanted to try to do that first uh perfect dawah and rashid if you wanted to try to steel man the uh negation of the quran's position but it's just a suggestion and at your first word, I will start the clock. Yeah. So, um, do you guys want yeah. to go first? I, I I don't know. Maybe uh, Brother Rashid, you want to go? First no, you can. Go ahead. You can. <clears throat> okay. I just would like to say that, uh, of course, uh, you mentioned a lot of uh, you know different verses that take maybe many many hours that we go through one by one okay like wife beatings and chopping hands and uh, disbelief okay because uh, you take all uh, interpretation of a bunch of backward uh, you know extremists and then present it here and then <clears throat> many uh, many fabricated hadiths and this is uh, i think is hypocrisy that you do not believe that prophet muhammad peace upon him split the moon okay and take it as a lie, as I take it also as a lie, okay? But the same source, but the same source says something negative about Islam, you take that one as, uh, you know, uh, uh, source, a, a true uh, hadith, okay? An authentic hadith. And I say, just a moment, please, yeah? Why I say that it is fabricated, because I have so many verses in Quran that goes against that, Okay. And those fabricated hadiths that you bring also, I compare them with Quran, and I see that they go against Quran. For example, killing apostate, okay? <clears throat> so my uh, main source is Quran. When I see that Quran says no compulsion in religion, when I see in a uh, verse Quran says that those who believe and then they commit kof, become kafir, and then again believe, and then again become kafir, and that there are scholars also who say that how can 
and apostate be killed where if they uh, if they are how can they come back if they are already killed okay and then quran says that after they die a natural death not even kill after they die allah will punish them hereafter so allah even mentioned that those who believe and then uh, became apostate Mujie, yeah, you're, you're yeah. taking the whole time for your uh, for your long speech here um okay. I just want to respond very uh, briefly to um, something that you just asked. You said, yeah. uh, so you said, you said we present these sources about Muhammad uh, and have these bad interpretations of them, but we also reject that Muhammad split the moon, although that comes from the same source. And you ask how that could be. I would say that's actually a very, a very bad um, application of logic. Um, let me give you an example. If somebody uh, is known to say. Uh, you know, these people should be killed, those people should be killed, that guy should be beaten, and so on. I will say, well, okay, we have obviously that, that person is saying it. If that person is also uh, reported as, as as somehow splitting the moon, I will say, yeah, that's that's simply not true. I'm, I'm sorry, that, that, that's, that doesn't work. We have evidence against it, we have no evidence for it, and it's just an absurd belief. If somebody comes to me and says, uh, I want to kill you, I will say, this guy wants to kill me. If he says, I went and, uh, you know, uh, pulled unicorns out of my fridge this morning and then they flew up to the sky. I will say, yeah, that's nonsense. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just you can, that you, you, cannot, are, you, you cannot compare these two, okay. two things to each that, other. One is a claim of something fantastic, yeah. of, some, of some fantasy, and another yeah. is a clear statement which should be judged based on what it says or does not say. Yeah. If you now blame me for the fact that so many hadiths say that people should be fought, that apostates should be killed, and so on, then I would like to tell you, what is your problem? Please go and talk to Muslims, debate them, not me, because most Muslims believe in these things. You don't. But also, no. AP, what kind of a like dodge was that? Perfect dawah. I'm sorry. We, I have presented AP has listed nothing but Quranic verses, and your first response was to say these hadiths you present are fabricated. What have we presented right now that is not from the Quran? That should stay focused on the Quran. Yeah. All right, the, uh, the, you have presented a lot of hadiths. Uh, I don't remember all I of them. I didn't present but, a single yeah. hadith. I didn't no, no. AP. I, I did. I did. Ah, oh, okay. AP. Yes, AP. Uh, but, but it's but it's weird that you that you actually come with that criticism, considering that you uh, presented some quotes from Ali yeah. and from Hussein, which have no relevance at all to the Quran. Yes, they have. Yeah, they are. Uh, yes. Let let. I read first Quranic verses that it says that pardon the people, those who wrong you. Okay, pardon them, and then I put. From Ali Radiallah and from Hussein. Uh, okay, so why did, then why do you complain? Also say, yeah. Then why do you they, complain that we that we present hadiths, which are, by the way, co uh, compared to your as opposed to, opposed to your your sources, totally widely accepted by Muslims? Why are you complaining about this? I don't understand. Yeah, uh, this is uh, they are just because it they, they have accepted. Okay, it has because uh, the, in the past people couldn't read and write. If I was living myself. In the past, or even today, if I was living in, a, you know, a, a village in Afghanistan, okay, I perhaps would also accept them. But today, we have the internet. I can read. I can reach Brother Rashid, and we can discuss with each other. And I can read myself. So it is not because of Islam. It's because of uh, education that people. Okay, have. so let, let, me, let me ask you a write. question. And they were just a moment. And they were just following a bunch of, you know, uh, businessmen called. The scholars or imam okay and they were, were afraid also to go against the mainstream because they were thinking about their job if i go against the mainstream i can show you even you know this uh, dr uh, Tarek, uh, uh you're, on, you're on a tangent again let me ask you a question to say, to say on a topic uh so muhammad said uh in a widely attested hadith uh that those who leave islam should be killed do you, no, he didn't say. Okay, okay, you, you don't accept that. No. Now, on the other hand, um, Hussein said allegedly that for, uh, forgiving uh, is very good, but you accept that. So yeah, I accept that because it goes in line with Quran. I gave you verses of Quran and <laughs> that hadith. Can I ask you a and, question? And, I, I'm and done. And that hadith, and that hadith, killing apostate, I give you uh, uh, verses from Quran that says uh, those who, uh, you know, believe and then become uh, kafir and then again believe it shows that uh, and then the biggest uh, punishment for uh, apostate Allah says in Quran brother Rashid remember perhaps I can bring it up for you that Allah says that 
your, uh, you know, good deeds here uh, will be totally lost. That's the biggest uh, threat to apostate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, okay? Uh, there is Rashid, no award. Rashid, do you, do you also believe in this uh, whitewashed, weird version of Islam, or do you actually believe in the real Islam? I believe in the real Islam, the one that stems from the Quran. Okay. Oh, that's even worse. Okay. So, so, do you believe that? Uh, do you believe, for example, that it is uh, just to fight the disbelievers and to humiliate them until they pay the jizya, to uh, execute apostates, to beat wives, to marry children, to have slaves, and so on? No. So, what do you say about these things that the Quran because says? None of those things are in the Quran in my reading, in the, my understanding of the Quran. Okay, so when we come to Quran chapter 9, verse 29, uh, mm -hmm. which is my, my favorite Quran verse, it mm -hmm. says, Fight those who don't believe in Allah or the last mm -hmm. messenger or who do not accept the religion of truth from those who uh, uh, read the scripture and fight until they are humiliated and pay the jizya. What, why does it tell us, why does it tell Muslims to fight those who don't believe in Islam? Well, if you read the verses... I just have to say, I have to say, Brother Rashid has a video on his channel. Please, everybody check it, okay? Very nicely, he's explaining it. Now, listen. Uh, okay, he was going to answer the question. Uh, yes, please. yes, now listen. Yes, I have explained also that, as Muji said on my, uh, on my channel, regarding that verse, that the verse is, it's in a conversation that is happening from verse number 29 and continues all the way to 36. So you have to read all those verses in order to understand what is actually happening in that verse. All of it is about the Jewish and Christian people. I think you can agree with that, right? That it's about it's talking about Jews and Christians. That's the objection, pretty, right? Pretty much, yeah. You, you, but in the much, next yeah. verse, you see that you see why it also talks about Jews and Christians yes. because they have corrupt beliefs, allegedly. Yes. Now the reason why I say that is because uh, first of all, the part about fighting them you're fighting them according to that verse that is given you cited three different reasons that they don't have iman in god or in the last day and you're fighting them because they do not implement this thing called din al haq and also that they do not uh, they uh, do not make haram what god and his messenger have made haram would you agree that that those are the reasons that you're fighting with them no uh, i yeah i think so yes well you have to ask yourself then okay what about those christians who do in fact believe in God on the last day? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. That that would be a misrepresentation of what it actually says. The Quran verse uh, yeah. says that you should fight those who don't believe in Allah or in the last day, who yeah. do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful. Mm -hmm. We have already hereby disqualified all Christians and Jews, and oh who do not and who do not adopt the religion of truth from they among those who are given the Scripture. So. Those who are given the scripture are, by Islamic standards, the Christians and Jews. And those mm -hmm. who don't accept the religion of truth from among those who uh, read the scripture are Christians and Jews who don't convert to Islam. So this but, basically tells you to fight the non-Muslims. But would you disagree with me if I said that in the Quran, there are Christians who do believe in God and the last day? Uh, there were in the initial time, since the Quran is a completely man-made uh, book which changed with the times, initially the Christians were seen as righteous people, but later on it was completely changed into those who don't accept Islam. Uh, they are not accepted and they are wrong. So, and, and this, this verse clearly, by this verse's standards, Christians today, for example, are targeted as those who should be fought. Well, I disagree with that categorization that uh, because you have no basis for it. You can argue for it, you can comment on it, but you have no basis for it from the Quran. You can claim, oh, this came later and abrogated that, but you have no claim whatsoever from the Quran. The all right, all right. Would the all Sabians right. get a free pass? The, the what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. The, the Sabians or the Sabians, as the Quran yeah. mentions, would they, would they be considered believing in Allah in the last day? Uh, I would assume so. I mean, I haven't met one myself. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk about that. Quran does, That's why. <laughs> the Quran does include them among those who have Iman in God and the last day in Surah Al Baqarah, yes. How about this? Um, is somebody who is a Christian and who believes in the Trinity, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, does mm -hmm. that Christian, um, is that Christian spared by this Quran verse? Yes. How? They're spared because they do not fulfill all the different criteria that the verse gives. 
The verse gives three things that you're, you're not supposed to just fight them for one reason. You're supposed to fight them for those three reasons combined. You don't fight them for just one. If it was just one, it That's would true. mention just one. But it mentions those three. Re- those three. Uh, you can shake your head if you want, but you can. The, verse, the, the, the reasons that are given there is, first of all, they do not have Iman in God and the last day. And the other, the other is that they do not forbid what God and his messenger have forbidden. You have to find out what is that that they have uh, made haram, which God and his messenger have made uh, halal. You have to find out what that is. That what means is following it? Sharia. That's all it means. You have to follow Sharia and be a Let me finish. So, 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 so let's say somebody who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't believe in what Muhammad uh, revealed, who doesn't, who doesn't accept Islam, and who doesn't agree with Muhammad's morality. Such a person who basically by, then, by that standard doesn't fit any of the criteria in this verse. What, what, what is with that person? That person should then be fought. Again, as I was saying before you interrupted me, uh, I, say, I was saying that the verse is talking about the thing you have to find out what is it that actually is it talking about people who drink alcohol, even though alcohol has been forbidden? No, that's not what it means, but what God, God and his messenger are forbidden, which is why I said before you have to read it through to verse number 36 to actually understand what the verses are talking about. The verse is talking about certain groups and of certain groups among the Christians and the Jews which says in kathira min al ahbari wa ruhban that a majority of the of the rabbis and the monks and the, and those kinds of people in the elite the clerics those elite people that they uh, they consume the wealth of people wrongfully okay they consume ya kluna amwal an nas bil but they believe they in consume. god those those i say it says that a majority of them did and that's the reason why you are fighting but, them but they believe the but they believe in god you, you just you just told us uh, just, out of yes. you, just, you just told us by reading yeah. into the Quran that that, that 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 the people have to fulfill all of the criteria yeah. of this verse, which is something that no scholar ever said in yes. order to be to be fought. But now you're saying that uh, mm-hmm. that this is only for certain people who do unjust things, but yes. but may, but they believe that they still believe in God, so they should. I don't be believe. Because Did you hear me say the word God. believe? Did you hear me say the word believe? Did anybody hear me actually say the word okay. believe? Somebody who is a Christian uh, and who also oppresses people, who does all kinds of terrible things, but who mm-hmm. also professes to be a Christian and to believe in God. Is that person a Christian or not? That person might be a Christian. I so, don't know. So, okay. okay. I didn't that, say the word by that, by that standard, by that standard, that person is automatically disqualified because I he professes to believe in God. AP, let him talk. Okay. okay. Let him talk. I didn't say, well, you're putting words in my mouth. I asked you, did I say the word believe? It doesn't matter if you said the word belief. You just no, it matters. It matters. You, said I would you, would you, you just said that uh, one has to qualify for all of the criteria of this verse exactly. in order to be to be fought. Then you yes. gave examples of people who do strange things, but yeah. those people, if they profess to be Christians and to believe in God, that means you have to accept that they believe in God. So then you no. cannot fight fight them. By your own you still not, not understand what I said. I said that the Quran commands to fight people who do not have iman in God and the last day. I never said believe because you are confusing that's, that's iman the, that's with the same, belief. That's the same thing. No, no it's, it's not the same. Yes, it's the same thing. Be- iman no, literally is difference. faith. Can you, believe you, it's the the same thing. Can you please explain the difference? It's the same the thing. Difference, the thing is that the Quran specifically talks about this when it says that the Bedouin Arabs say we believe in God, we have iman in God and the last day. What does Allah say? If you know the verse, what does he say? Yeah, you do not believe or you, have, yeah. uh, you say you believe, but you have no faith. But yeah. that, that doesn't matter at all. Uh, but it's, no, they say that. According, they say that. You, you, right? can, you can use the same wordplay for many things in the world. That does not negate the fact that belief is iman and that, that, uh, believing, no. that believing in God in the Quran is unanimously used for professing to believe. Uh, it, it simply does not make sense. Who are you talking about? Who is I supposed have, to be fought by this Quran verse? The people is. Let me let me explain that. Go ahead. But then I stop and then you can go on. Go ahead, sure. That's okay. The people that I've spoken about are the people who are in the higher ups, the clerics, those people who have the ability of making laws. That's why the Quran says those who forbid what God and his messenger. We regular people don't have the power, don't have the authority to actually forbid. You and I, we don't have the power to forbid things. It's talking about people who are in the upper ups, 
the higher ups, the clerics. That's why in verse 34, when I mentioned, it says, Inna kathira min al -ahbari. These are the people who are making the laws, making, the, making the, 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 the dictations about how society is supposed to be run. And these are the people who are being commanded to be fought against. Why? Because A, they don't have iman in God and the last day. I didn't say belief. They do not forbid what God and his messenger are forbidden, which is what they take the wealth of the people and consume it wrongfully. Number three, they do not they do not implement the deen al-haq. Deen is not religion. They do not implement the deen al-haq. Deen comes from, it means judgment. It means a legal system, a legislature that is within a common community. That's why in Surah Yusuf, when you see the word deen being used, it talks about Joseph not being able to take his brother in the deen of the king. That doesn't mean religion. Deen does not mean religion. It has only been applied to that. But what that verse is talking about, is talking about people who, these people who are in the higher-ups, who do not implement the laws, the, the legislation that is actually beneficial to the people. That makes it a falsehood. And so they do not qualify for iman. They might believe, yes, but they don't qualify for iman. So when you see that verse, and also the other part is the jizya. Jizya does not, is not a tax, not Quranically. Jizya is a compensation that is supposed to be paid by those people, because they consumed the wealth of the people wrongfully, they have to okay, pay. Um, you, 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 ask, you, ask to finish your, 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 you ask to finish your speech, but you speak forever. This is an open discussion. You can, yeah, can, you, can, can you can do it in your opening speech. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, when we talk about Quran chapter 9, Go verse ahead. 29, you are completely reading into the verse. Uh, the verse it, itself doesn't say any of these things. It merely says, fight those who don't believe in Allah. In fact, let me do this. Let me share my screen here for, uh, for a second and show you what, uh, what the the great scholar Ibn Kathir said about this, who does not agree with you, he agrees with me. Uh, yeah. So let, let's let's see what, what Ibn Kathir said. Uh, if you can if you can put my screen on the uh, screen here. So uh, he cites Ibn Kathir is the greatest uh, uh, interpreter of, of, of the Quran. No, he says, not. fight against those not. who believe not in Allah or in the last day, or forbid that which Allah is forbidden by, by Allah and his messenger, and those who acknowledge not the religion of truth from among the people of the scripture, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel himself subdued. <clears throat> now, does it say in the following uh, parts anything about just the rulers? No. He and almost all scholars that I've ever heard of. I've never, I've never heard this interpretation that Rashid just presented. He says, when people of the scripture disbelieved in Muhammad, they had no beneficial faith in any messenger. They followed their own religions, they, which conformed with their beliefs. But here is the actual uh, part. It says, fight against those who believe not in Allah. He then explains this as, this honorable ayah verse was revealed with the order to fight the people of the book after the pagans were defeated. The people entered Allah's religion in large numbers and the Arabian Peninsula was secured under the Muslims control, Allah commanded his messenger to fight the people of the scriptures, Jews and Christians, on the ninth year of the Hijra. And he prepared his army to fight the Romans and call people to jihad and so on. This says nowhere, no scholar ever said that this is about fighting certain authorities, certain people. No. You can clearly see it says fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last day in that which Muhammad uh, and his messenger Allah and his messenger have forbidden and who don't accept the religion of truth. This is about those who do not believe in Islam. And this was interpreted this way by every Islamic scholar ever that is that is no, actually known and true. known known and, and known and relevant the to the dominant religion. What? Even I'm if we were to follow, even if we were to follow your logic, right, that it's it just mm -hmm. referred to like the scholars or the the elite class who are the rule makers or the legislators mm -hmm. or whatever, because what you're saying is that we've moved away from what Allah and the Sunnah commands, which is essentially perfect Sharia, right? So according to your logic, then even that verse today would still apply to like world leaders. Everywhere there's not Sharia, yeah. you'd come, you'd try and kill the disbelievers, you'd try and go into the houses of Parliament, you'd go no. to the White House. And second no. of all, when it's when even going by your logic, then if it's not just the if, if enough people, let's say the Quraysh tribe, if enough of them didn't follow what Sharia mandates or what Allah mandates, and they were refusing to do it because they're not they're like, oh, we want to drink alcohol or we want to fornicate or whatever Sharia does not let them do. If enough people are refusing to follow Sharia they would be considered disbelievers because they are forbidding the inaction of Sharia through actions. Do you see what I mean? So even yes, though... Yes, I understand, you, I, understand, I, I understand your argument, but it does not follow the, the, the line of reasoning that I presented before. 
I understand what you're trying to say. The lawmakers and people in power, then tech and the Quran is an eternal book, right? Timeless. I don't agree with that. Yeah, what about the American government, for example? This, I mean, <laughs> this book, this verse should then also target the American government and many Western exactly. governments and many, exactly. many governments and people in our time as uh, those who should be fought. So what exactly are you trying to communicate here uh, to tell us that Islam is actually good? By this and Muslims have said this it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, will not rest until the flags of Islam mm -hmm. are rising high above the, the power. Yeah. It's not the Quran. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily say to fight them, you know, with uh, weapons, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh Rashid, wow. Yeah, wow. just in there. Fred Rashid, yeah. Uh, fight them with your that. mind. Yeah, yeah, just in as, as I was saying, look, that, that I understand your arguments, but I just don't follow the line of reasoning. I oh, asked no. you before, that, well, because before I asked you, I, I asked AP that there are verses in the Quran where the Quran specifically tells us that there are Christians, Jews and Christians who do have Iman in God and the last day and they are considered from among the Salihin. And th if those people are living under the Islamic you know, system, those people, you don't fight those people. Then who are those people? Who are those people? They don't even qualify for jizya according to the Quran. Now, I know what, okay, who are those I, know what has happened, I know what has happened practically, what people have done throughout Islamic history. They who have are those people? Us. I agree with that. Who those, are those Christians? The Jews and the... the, the who, who, are the who are those Jews and Christians who are uh, with faith and thing. Iman? Okay, who are they? That doesn't the mean anything. Who who are do they? Good. The Jews and Christians who do good in the world, who try to work to make the world a better place. What, is, what, is, what is good? Yeah, define good. <laughs> good. You already defined it in your opening uh, yeah, uh, statement. Your definition, because it, apparently that qualifies no, them. Mine does not, does not differ from yours. Does not differ from yours. Well, it's it's talking about positive. what is positively, positively beneficial for society, which increases the well-being of the of the of the people. That is okay. what is good. How about me. how about a Christian who believes that uh, that God is um, a Godhead, that there is a, thr a Trinity, that God is uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Is that Christian a righteous, good Christian by the Quran standards? Or is it only yeah. Unitarians that are allowed? Please go ahead, answer. I they cannot can... answer. No, please, please go ahead, Rashid. Answer the question. Yeah, let's, let's Rashid. Yeah, brother Rashid. Okay. They, they, they have committed a fallacy within their belief, but that doesn't mean that they are bad people. That doesn't mean that they don't qualify for righteousness. So that doesn't mean that they are bad That's, or that they're going to that hell. Was, that was not my question. Are those Christians considered the, the righteous uh, Salihin who have faith in God? Who they are excluded from the violence? It's because they of what they do. It's it's because of what they do. They can they, be from the, among the Salihin. They can be from among the Salihin. It yes. depends on what they do. Yes, it depends on what they do. The Salihin is wow. about action. Okay, um, it's about well, action, righteousness. Then, then why exactly does uh, then why exactly does the verse specifically after Quran chapter nine verse twenty nine in Quran chapter nine verse thirty it specifically gives as reasoning to fight the Christians? It says the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths. They mm -hmm. imitate the saying of those who disbelieve. May Allah destroy them. How deluded are they? Which comes exactly after the order to fight them as reasoning to fight them and yes. the quran also says in chapter 5 verse 70 to 76 clearly that those who believe that jesus is god are corrupted and they will go to hell and burn there forever and for them is no help at all so you just told us that this only goes for some specific Christians who do terrible things and who are uh, up high and that all those Christians who actually uh, believe in God and have faith are considered good in Islam. But then I the Quran they, clearly I, tells they can you. Be. Difference, they can be. I didn't no, they say they can't are. be. No, they can't be. No, they can't be. They can be. You asked my opinion. Can't. I said they can be. They can be righteous. They can be included among those if they are right, if their works are righteous. Well, yes, you, are, you, are, you are wrong. I'm sorry. They have committed a blasphemous act. They have committed something that is blasphemous, yes. But one act, one bad act alone does not disqualify all the good that you do. It cannot. One simply you doing one simple act that is bad or them saying that Jesus is God or whatever, that doesn't nullify every single good that they do. It just can't. Okay, that's not how the Quran works. You, maybe that is how you have interpreted it or understood it, but no. The it's, Quran, it's, it's, not, it's not me. It's like it's the majority of Muslim scholars and Muslims who have interpreted it this way. So I have to take something back here. Uh, 
I said at the beginning that perfect Dawah presented an Islam that doesn't represent Islam as we know it at all. Unfortunately, that's also true for Rashid. He, his version of Islam is something strange as well. Can I say something, please? Uh, the author of the book in chapter 3, verse 7 say, it is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. In it, there are uh, verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book and others unspecific. As for those whose heart is corrupted like you and ISIS and Taliban. Yeah, and, and, and let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. all let those explain, verses that are... Let me explain, let me explain. Uh, all those, all those will, verses no, that are, that are good me, and that agree with you no, are AP, clear you verses, to, no, and all those to, verses who disagree with you no, are... Me, all right, uh, uh, Apostle Prophet, let's let, it, let Dawah finish because he did start... No, let me, yeah, you have been sure, talking a lot. You have been talking a lot, okay? So, as for those whose heart is corrupted like you and ISIS and Taliban, they will follow that... Shut up. I'm sorry. I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to this. I'm not going to listen to this. I will not be quiet about this. While this guy sits here and equates me in the name of his shameless decision disgusting, murderous religion to ISIS and Taliban, yeah, when okay. he shares their idiotic, absurd beliefs, which should only be believed by people who have extremely subhuman standards of verifying okay. what is and is not true. Don't sit here and give me that speech, you piece of <laughs> shit, while okay. claiming to be the, the reasonable one here. Okay, don't, right. don't, don't laugh. You should okay. turn around and criticize and discuss yeah, with yeah. those All Muslims right. who are yeah. in your ranks and who kill people, murder people, and who talk yeah. about killing killing people left and right instead yes. of coming here to me and yes. equating me with the terrorists that you okay. share your beliefs with okay because so you shut said, up yeah, shut the yeah. fuck up i will not listen to such okay. idiotic speech All and right. then be told to be reasonable or whatever it is okay. from your yes, side yes, yes. Right. also so, can, can, we, can we just clear something up are, are you yeah. do you have you any sympathies here. for the people's mujahideen organization ah okay i was or going to bring uh, yes yes i was going to bring I up yes yeah just a moment I was going to bring up that one, but uh, you mentioned it right now. So people yeah. like you, yeah, people like you who cannot judge something that's happening in 21st century, that I am alive, my organization is alive, exists today, okay? And you guys... It's been you, banned. Yeah, just, a just a minute. Yeah, no. Okay, okay. You see that you are absolutely uneducated uh, educated in this subject. And uh, Prophet Muhammad was living 1400 years ago. I understand that that's very difficult for you. But just one week ago, 261 U.S. congressmen and uh, senators have supported my organization as the legitimate democratic organization for the Iranian fascist regime. Okay, and I have want to ask you. I have asked wow. uh, AP. Yes, yeah, and I have asked. Wait, nice, wait, just a moment. Nice I have asked. Uh, let me, let me, group. let me. And I have asked AP. Okay, I have asked AP that you and your friend Armin. Okay. Just you guys, if you prove me that my organization is banned or terrorist or whatever, okay, then I leave Islam, okay, and I will support you because you guys cannot decide something that is, that is, is today. That is, that is so yeah, weird. Yeah, well, you decide yeah. to put to support or not support Islam uh, based on whether okay, your, so, right, your terrorist, okay. your communist group yeah. is, is right or not. I don't care about your communist group. This is not a propaganda channel right, talking about, yeah. about Islamic values here. So yeah, so you you, exactly, might, you yeah. might support a communist terrorist organization or a okay. peaceful communist organization. I don't care about it at all. That's, but just, why, why your, you that's, just, no. that's just your hypocrisy. No. But if you want to come here and, uh, and equate us with terrorists, Terrorism, while you share the ranks like, of yeah, people who yes. advocate for killing people like me, yes, then yeah. I will, uh, I will not. Yeah, have because, any respect for you because, ever. yeah, because, yeah, because you, I, I asked you before that if uh, an ISIS was going to kill you, and I was there, I was trying to say that no, this is not Islamic. Uh, would you support me? You, you said that no. I'm, I'm not going to lie because you don't care about. Yeah, I will, I will repeat. Yeah, I will yeah, repeat yeah, that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will repeat because that again. Yeah, yeah. I will repeat because, that again. That's actually yeah. perfect. That's perfect uh, because I care more about the the yeah. truth here than about whether I I yeah. well fell where or, or farewell or not. Yes. So now if we are explain. if we are in a situation where an ISIS guy actually wants to kill me and you say hey no this is not real Islam I will say hey that guy is full of shit. This yeah, is real because Islam. because so, you ahead. are living in USA and you know that nothing will happen to. 
to you, but the guys who are in Pakistan and Afghanistan, you don't care about them, okay? And I have the fact you have just you, one single. Ex, ex, no, ex, wait, wait. Excuse me. What you the hell does that? What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? The people in Afghanistan and Pakistan believe that I should be killed. The people in Afghanistan and Pakistan believe that blasphemy should be punishable by death. They believe that women should be beaten. They believe in rape. They believe in all of these things. Is that somehow my fault? No, I don't support it. What do you mean he supports that? What the hell are you talking about? Okay, 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 guys. So this has been... Okay, go attack your fellow Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. All right, I think... This has been a little, it's going a little too crazy now. Do we need to do the one minutes or can we just? I think we should. I think I'm. I think I'm done. Uh, Yeah, one minute is better. (laughs) I think think, I think I'm I'm done. Yeah, no, I'm going to show things. You are not done. Okay, we have twelve minutes left. I do want to give Nuria and uh, Rashid some time to talk a little bit. Yeah, how about let's 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 talk. You cannot run away. A little bit more. AP, you cannot run away. I'm going to show you. Hey, hey, how, sh- sh- uh, talk, okay. talk, to, your, let's talk let's, let's, to your terrorist friends. Don't talk to me, yeah. okay? Talk, Try to convince your terrorist uh, Muslim over the friends. Conversation Don't convince me. Can we do one yeah, sure. Please. No, um, I'm perfect. Though. I had, like I, I, I try and sympathize with Muslims or quote unquote Muslims like yourself who come and they read all these fluffy, nice verses. What you'll see by and large is they choose verses from the Meccan period of Islam when Muhammad had no power and is so cute and cuddly and he's like to you your religion to me mine and then boom as soon as he gets power and the medina versus medina versus kick in it's just pure bloodshed and violence and perfect dawah will never ever or rashid will never accept that it just says verbatim literally what it says even though perfect dawah says the quran itself says some of these verses are completely clear and some are uh, like metaphors or whatever. I'd like to ask Perfect Dawa and Rashid, Alif Lam Mim, what does that mean in the Quran? Let's say even if that's a metaphor, what, what does Yasin mean? Because from my research, Yasin refers to Sin, which is the moon god, and it goes all the way back to Babylonia. So why has that entered your Quran? And if so, what are your scholars saying besides, oh, Allah knows best? So, I mean, if we can't even figure out the the, the basic stuff and you're not going to accept the literal stuff for what it is, Perfect Dawah, I don't. I was just asking whether you sympathize, sympathize with this organization because. But you don't know anything about, about the organization. You have a okay, completely okay, okay, alternate that. Islam. Your Islam is nothing like what mainstream Muslims accept. And now you keep coming on these channels and you keep pro- propagating your version of Islam, which honestly, maybe outside the walls of your organization, it does not exist. You don't accept the Hadith. That's why you popped off the AP straight I accept, away. No, I accept. I read for you Hadith. Okay. okay, please don't say. I What's read for your Hadiths. Yeah. Okay, so the which one which you... goes no no the, the one which goes in line with Quran oh. the one which goes in line with Quran I accept them the one so why did the bad ones Quran, end up there why are the bad ones in the same book please explain it's not the same book it's uh it is in the Hadith book okay and they uh they decided what, to what is the Hadith book? Okay. sorry what is the Hadith book the Hadith book is uh, the, the six at least you know, yeah the, the, the tellings of uh, Prophet Muhammad okay not which which Hadith are, book are you talking about. I'm talking about different, uh, all these book hadith that I say any hadith for, for, that goes for example, against for example, any which hadith good. Uh, even Bukhari, is... Bukhari Muslim, they are they have a lot of fabricated hadiths in them. Do they okay? also have uh, good hadiths which you reference all the time? Yes, or? I said that. Yeah, I said okay, that. So, so, that so your standard. So your yes. standard is that uh, Quran. I slander this Quran. Your standard is that if one of those hadiths in Sahih Bukhari, for example, agrees with your understanding of the Quran, then it it is uh, authentic. If it does not agree with your understanding of the Quran, then it is inauthentic. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't have to be a genius to tell you how dumb that is. Considering that uh, whether it agrees with the message presented in the Quran or not cannot be a standard based on which you can uh, verify the authenticity of uh, reports within that book, because those reports are not. Uh, written down based on how oh, does this agree with the Quran? Yeah, not, yeah, whatever. No, they are written down based on uh, witnesses, based on reports by people who come and deliver something that Muhammad allegedly said and are then verified by multiple t- people until they arrive at this guy who then writes them down in his book, which is called Sahih al-Bukhari. So you would have to look at the actual sources at the transmitters of these messages of these hadiths in order to uh, verify whether they can be true or not. And I'm sorry, but uh, the verses to kill apostates, for example, 
are very, very much authentic. The ones talking about taking slaves are quite authentic. The ones about child marriage are considered uh, mutawatir. They are authentic. They were delivered by multiple people and so on. So your standards are simply biased and corrupt. Okay, and bear in uh, mind, this was written 200 years after yeah. the Prophet anyway, but yeah. also Prophet right. Dawah Al-Azhar University has said that even Daif Hadiths, the weak ones, have a grading of 35 to like 85% oh. of being accurate. Okay, now we also have to talk. In that one yeah. moment that person was lying. We don't, we, we don't get any uh, chance to talk, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. In Quran, there is a chapter of uh, called Munafiqun, the Hippocrates, even if it goes back to the very, okay. you know, yeah. the, Yes, yes. Even if it goes back to very, you know, uh, uh, companion of the Prophet Muhammad, you cannot be 100% sure that Prophet Muhammad said because it could be a Hippocrates, okay? So, and, uh, and Quran chapter 4, verse 80 to 83 explain that these Hippocrates, by night, when they went out of Prophet Muhammad's lecture, they said things that Prophet Muhammad didn't say. Quran itself explained that they were making rumors from we, we, can, and, can I, and can let I, me tell you no, no me, i want to i want to help you i want to help you i want to help you we are not going to talk yeah i want to help you one moment one moment yeah, please sure. moavia moavia lied so much about ali radiallah that when ali radiallah was killed in the mosque people were saying that did ali radiallah went to mosque so such God, a, such this, a is, this is, by the way, this is Shia propaganda. This is yes. Shia propaganda. This has nothing to do with yes. our conversation. Yes. But, but you, are, you, would, you defend Shia Islam, and you are here to defend no, I'm Shia not. Islam. I'm not Shia. This is no, basically I'm not what you're Shia. doing. No, I'm not Shia. I say that they were fighting each other. They were making propaganda against each other. They were fabricating, you know, information against each other and against Prophet Muhammad as well. So okay. you cannot, yes, you cannot say that I said that if it goes against Quran, okay, not my, uh, just my understanding, okay, So there what are we have... lots of people, okay, yes. So you, you, have, you have muddied your, your standards and made them corrupt even more than they actually were by telling us that there were uh, a lot of hypocrites, by the word, by the way, the word is hypocrite. Hippocrates. So just yeah, so Hippocrates can, uh, is like a just, Greek philosopher. So I was yeah, getting yeah, very yeah, confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's, it's it's hypocrites. But uh, so you're saying that uh, th that verifying those hadith is not just based on whether they agree with your Quran or not. They are also disqualified if they don't agree with your Quran because there are some people in the past that were hypocrites. This gets. Uh, much weirder if you think further about it you just uh you will then just go ahead and say well that guy was probably a hypocrite who delivered this hadith because there were hypocrites back in that time and this hadith doesn't agree with the quran well yeah. <laughs> that, I, isn't that okay. such an arbitrary standard yes, here yes. and what if we like, go back and actually look at those people who delivered i would like to share yes i would like to share this video <laughs> it's a very short video please yeah just a moment listen to this please so muslim you are and what you believe in yeah, yeah uh mm -hmm. so i am um I'm a you former hear? Muslim uh, of Turkish origin. You hear? Was born in Germany into a very religious uh, Muslim family of Turkish origins. Mm -hmm. um, my parents were very observant. I when I was are we going to watch the whole video now? When I was young, yeah, 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 just very short, very short, very short. Okay, just make your point. We okay, have five yeah, minutes left. Yeah, my point. Yeah, my point. Thank uh, you, I don't thank know why, you. That, yes, that was a great yes, live stream. Yes, by the yes, way, thank yes. you so much. My, my point. My point was that I unfortunately removed it. Yeah, within one hour. Okay, less than one hour. You make this uh, uh, young uh, down that that you told him, made him that he said uh, Muslims are. Uh, wild people with wild, uh, you know, culture, and you were saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Apple's uh, AP, that your parents were teaching you such a bad, th uh, you know, things that you one day will go and kill, you know, so, so, all, all. So let me get this. Let me let me get this straight. Just a few, <laughs> just a moment. Please. Muji, Muji, you talk, you okay. talk forever. Well, you second, yell, and yeah, then you say, no, no, no. Give him thirty seconds. Give him thirty seconds. Give him thirty seconds. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry that you. How many more times? Ah, yes, yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, you. I'm sorry that you were brought up in such a family that they were teaching you that you will go and kill Jews to the last one of them. I was working. That's for the I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, sorry I'm sorry. Very I'm very sorry second. that I was. I'm sorry very that I was second. brought up within a family yeah. that believes second, the vast please. majority of Muslims believe. Cause, cause, oh, cause, okay, cause. Just, just give me thirty seconds. Please, <laughs> thirty seconds. Please, thirty seconds. 
I was brought up in a family that I was, my father was very religious. I was working two years with Jews, okay? And I was invited to them. Not a single time my father was telling that Jews are bad and we are going to kill them, okay? And we, I have so many verses of Quran that talking you have, you have made about that point Jews. Clear. And Jews. Okay, isn't the 30 yeah. seconds over now? So, I'm sorry that you were in such a, uh, you know, family, you were raised in such a family. Muji, you have made that I'm point very, you, you have made that point, you have made that point very clear. Dawa. Here is the issue. Your Islam represents no Muslim that you will ever encounter outside in the street. Your Islam is restricted to few people, maybe a tiny percentage among Muslims like you. If you have an issue with the way Islam is practiced and vastly believed and presented by the vast majority of Islamic scholars, then go and challenge Islam. Go and challenge your Islamic scholars. Don't come I here said challenge, it before. challenge, challenge. Hey, before if you when I you said, when you I talk, said cause. I said when you cause. talk, when you oh, talk, wait, I don't wait. I don't care. You can talk about that later, okay? I, I said, don't give a shit please don't interrupt me and then complain about yeah. interrupting you if you have a problem with how islam is believed and practiced by islamic scholars have a debate and fight those people don't come here and accuse me or nuria ex-muslims who have actually experienced islam like most muslims experience them because of the way we have experienced islam go have your fight with islam not with us nobody cares about your islam not even muslims follow your channel muslims laugh about you they don't care about your message they don't care about your channel they don't care about your islam this is the real islam in the real islam you hate okay, you fight you are and whatever it is now, okay now point. now can i talk yeah i said beginning calls okay i said in the chat as well please organize i've said it to james many times please organize a, a, a debate between me and daniel isis jew okay and they have banned me all of them this uh, uh this youtuber uh, extremist YouTubers, and then you say all the time, "Can you cause please uh, share this screen?" You say it is my tiny, uh, you know, Islam. Can you please share this uh, video? Did, did, did you just call okay. Daniel like Kikichu ISIS? Yes, yes. Can you please share this? Okay. <laughs> these are look at this. Look at this. These are Islam. These women are, you know, these women are leaders. Okay, they are going to bring down Iranian regime. They are Muslims. Okay. And we are millions, so don't just say I am the only one, okay? Oh and this organization is the most democratic, and we have been fighting. Not uh, we have been fighting for the the you know uh, uh, for the the right of non-Muslims because we didn't have any problem wearing hijab, okay? You saw that they were hijabi, but the first people who came out against Khomeini and said you have no right to force people. To hijab was yeah, okay, this organization. Okay. Okay. So let don't me, say let me that guess. I am alone. Let me guess. Don't say let, that I'm alone. Okay, let me guess. You took the link to that video out of the Quran, right? What? Yeah. You took and the I link to that video. You let Rashid respond to the next women thing women real quick. Even yeah, let, let Rashid also talk. Yeah, Rashid. I, uh, sorry, perfect dawah. I, I really want to know which Quran you guys are reading and which translation because, wow, that is non existent anywhere else. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, uh, for me, I don't, uh, as to your question, Nuria, I don't uh, read uh, a translation because I understand the words in Arabic. So, so you uh, should know Daraba even better then, than anybody else. What does Daraba mean? Please explain. It means to, I mean, personally, for me, I think it does mean to hit. I have oh, never really? said that it doesn't. Thank you for being honest. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I mean, I look at the words. For me, for me, my methodology is quite simple. I look at the words. And I look at how they are used within the Quran. I do understand that words do have a certain tendency to be to mean multiple words. It's also in English. But I look at the words and I look at how the Quran uses those different words. And I look at how a, a verse, for example, or a certain belief about a certain verse or a certain opinion appears in one verse and another. And I look and I see, for example, does it make sense? For example, I used to believe those things that AP believes about that verse. I did. Uh, there's no denying that. I think that most Muslims who, you. who become, for example, a, let's say, if you want to say go away from the traditional narrative, that such people, they start out believing that kind of stuff, but then they evolve over time. I'm looking for the truth just as, you know, the rest of you. Uh, oh, but for me... From, you were so close what? to being ex-Muslim and then you just from got what? trapped back in. Yeah. From where, from, for me, I look at, I, I want to be as true to the Quran as possible. And for me personally, when I looked at it from that point of view, I had questions. Like, for example, when I had that understanding that that verse means kill, uh, sorry, fight the Jews because they don't believe and that kind of, that same understanding, I asked several questions as to uh, whether 
they would fit that verse. And when I found out, I started doing a process of elimination. And what that led me to was that it just can't be that interpretation. Though I understand that Ibn Kathir and the Tabari and the Zamakhshari and the different kinds of tafasirs that are out there, they do portray that kind of uh, they, they do portray that, portray that kind of idea. And for me personally, it's not difficult to understand why. I can understand completely why they did, why they had that belief, why they interpreted those verses like that. It is sort of like, uh, it, it's like, uh, I don't know how do you say, th those pins that you put and then they, they hit one another like that. What, what do you call that? Dominoes. Like those blocks, yeah. Like, it's like a domino effect. When one, one interpreter, great scholar interpreter, for example, comes out with this opinion, the later scholars are obviously going to take from that, from his inspiration. It's no, it's, it's, it's understandable. So they would, you find that they will quote the same point. They quote the same exact thing because they didn't want to deviate from the, uh, the, the normative. They didn't want to deviate from the accepted version. But Islam has gone through different versions. It's not just one. Islam has gone through different modes, different reformations, different kinds of Islam. The one that we just happen to have today just happens to be the one that, you know, that basically, you know, gained fame. But before that, Islam looked a hell of a lot different than it looks today. So yeah, for me, it's not that difficult. Stoning. So yeah. for me, the I'm going to let Nuria uh, respond to you, Rashid, and then um, we're going to go ahead and kick it into the Q&A. So go ahead, Nuria. No, I just wanted to say, yeah, you're right, Rashid. Obviously, there's so many standard holes. There's holes in the standard narrative anyway. We know that the way that the Quran was compiled and it came about. And I'm just grateful that verses like the breastfeeding of an adult and stoning did not end up in the version that we have today, even though we see remnants of it in the Hadith. Um, again, I just think it's very intellectually dishonest if you are taking some hadith as right because they fit into your narrative with the Quran and you discard the rest. If we're being really honest, the entire situation with the hadith is one gigantic telephone game, to be honest. Yes. yes. Um, so, yeah, so the credibility, I mean, it wouldn't even hold up in a court of law today. It's all... Um, it's all hearsay, right? The entire thing. So for you to kind of just, it's well and good. Everybody can kind of, I, I think even between the two of you, Rashid and Perfect Dawah, your Islams probably don't even match up amongst yourselves. So like AP said, it's kind of pointless sitting here trying to go push back against all of your individual fluffy, cuddly Islams that you like. Whereas the real Islam is there in the Quran. It's being like, it's, we see it in the world. We see why in Afghanistan, 50-year-old men are marrying six-year-old girls. We see why Boko Haram are taking sex slaves. We see why ISIS are enslaving Yazidi women. There is a common denominator, and that is Islam. And what's the, the source of Islam? It's the Quran itself. Absolutely. So That's your Islam. Wouldn't you say that that is, that is an Islam? Okay, I want to go ahead and go ahead and kick into the Q&A now, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, let me just check to see. I just... Fast, uh, want to say something fast. Well, I, no, I was, you guys had the um, you guys had the uh, opening statements. You guys had the first word, so I'm gonna go ahead and let them have the last word on that one. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and go to the Q and A now. Uh, so I'm putting 30 minutes on the clock, and I'm gonna ask the first question. This is a super chat from Zagros Oskan for 9.99. He asked, "Oh, we already did this one." Uh, he asked for you guys to do the um, the uh, Steel Man at the beginning of the open discussion. Didn't work out so good. Um, and he did follow up with that later. They said, this is what happens without steel man's big mess. Uh, said that for $1.99 later. So I will not have to ask that later. So, okay. Next question from thunderstorm for four ninety nine. They say the stone at the Mecca mm. is from the temple of Artemis and the moon symbol is her symbol. Aphrodite had a stone as well. So I believe that is for the affirmative side. Um, I, 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 I mean, my response to that is that uh, the Quran doesn't mention anything about a stone or, or a black stone being. I, I think that's what it's, uh, is refer it's a reference to. I personally, my personal opinion on the idea of the black stone, I actually believe it is either of two things. One uh, is that it might be a meteorite, that I think that it was a meteorite. And back then, probably people would think that that is sort of like a stone from the heavens and from the gods and that kind of thing. And so they took it and started venerating it for some reason. I think that that's, uh, that's most, most likely the case. I don't think that there's any special attachment to the stone. I think it's just a stone. There's nothing special about it. The hadiths about the prophet kissing it or touching it, I don't believe that, that he did that. 
but uh, uh, for, for if he did that, then I would say I would find that a bit questionable myself. So I, I have if, to if say, Mohammed, if Mohammed did that, then you I, find it questionable. If Mohammed actually, I would, I would find it questionable. Yes, nice. yes. but I don't. Stupid, but right? don't it's very but like, why are you yeah, worshiping but, a third? Because and no, it? because I would, I would then want to know why would he do that? Because yes. it doesn't make sense. Why? Because he's a pagan. That's why he's right? incorporating his old beliefs into the yeah. new. No, but but, new but, but, that, but we didn't say that we believe in that. We said. Why not include it in his book then? If it's so it's special, attached. why not Baba, include it in it? How do you both not believe in it? It's literally physically attached to the house of... It's part of the ritual yes. of Hajj. If you went to Hajj, would you not circumambulate the Gaba and then proceed to kiss the yeah, stone the and raise your sins? No, no I'm not, not going to kiss it. I'm not, not going stone. to kiss it. <laughs> okay. yeah, well, you well, you'd not be guys are not representative of Muslims. Yeah. So, so you don't you don't accept that uh, a possibly um, pagan or futile object is attached for veneration to to the center of worship in Islam, to the Kaaba, that black stone and. Mm. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think that uh, let me explain. Uh, try to explain that because the Kaaba has been destroyed and rebuilt and destroyed and rebuilt. At one time, it was completely eradicated after the Prophet had died, completely torn to the ground. So the idea, I think that uh, this idea behind a black stone or something like that, I think that it was something that possibly came in after the Prophet. That it was something that belonged to a different kind of tradition because there were multiple Kaabas around so it wasn't just you know the Kaaba so I think that maybe that that came in later but of course I have no absolute evidence for that someone can uh, disagree with that if you want but that's just my theory is that it came in at a later point because I think that if it had such a significance as it has today like we think that has such a significance if it did it would be for me I don't find it possible that the prophet would attach such significance and still not mention anything about it in the Quran, for me personally. Oh, Rishi, it is when like, one of the caliphs says, oh, if it wasn't for Muhammad circumambulating or doing this, kissing the stone, we wouldn't have done it. It's, so it's, the, uh, it's, it's yeah. Omar yeah. hadith. Omar, Omar says Omar. in a very widely attested hadith, which is considered extremely authentic by Islamic standards, by the way, yes, yes, that he went to it and he said, uh, if I didn't see the, if I had not seen the prophet uh, kiss you, I would not kiss you because you okay. missed the stone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they say also, even... I'm they... really glad, sorry, perfect though, I just want to say, I'm really yes. glad none of you will kiss the stone or go near it because <laughs> yeah. it yeah. was even taken by, what's his name? Abu Tahir al-Janabi or something. Yeah. It was looted and he used to actually desecrate on it he would pee on it and stuff so good going guys yeah i just would like to say uh, add something that uh it, they even said that uh two verses of quran is missing because uh, it was eaten by a goat so exactly. uh, i don't believe in everything they say okay just because they said i don't believe in that all right yes okay, next okay. Question. so let's go to the next question uh jack mason sent a 99 uh euro i believe uh I'm going to double check that in a second. But uh, he also sent, there was no message attached to that one. But then he also sent a 599 uh, super chat. And I guess that is euros. Yeah, I was correct. Um, so the Quran could be misunderstood from people that live in the village in Afghanistan and do not have education. That means that its core values are bad. Well, once again, mm. please, I didn't understand. <clears throat> once sure. again. Uh, so the Quran could be misunderstood from the people that live in a village in Afghanistan and do not have education. That means that its core values are bad. All right. Uh, uh, first, I have to say that uh, <clears throat> first, uh, I have to say um, Nuria mentioned something. Uh, and I repeat again that you, you mentioned uh, uh, old guy in Afghanistan marry a, a child. I mentioned as well, I have said it many times that if I was living there in, in that village, brought up there, I pr probably I would do the same. If I was born in a, a drug culture family in Colombia, I would uh, probably have tattoo everywhere, guns and go and kill people. So it depends on where you are brought up and what kind of education you have gotten, okay? And yes, uh, many books uh, can be misunderstood, okay? And uh, uh, I understand that uh, the, the meaning of uh, creation wasn't uh, like this, that everything is perfect. Yes, you can say that why God, uh, the people 
uh, there are atheists who say that why God doesn't send a prophet today, okay? And I, uh, you can ask this question. This is how God has created his creation, and this is how he decided to guide us, all right? And he knows, he knew that one day we all be righteous and we will live in a beautiful world, okay? He know that. He know that we grow. He know that we develop, okay? So that's why you cannot just sit here now and say why it was a... This is our situation. The, 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 uh, what is it? The message is important. The message is beautiful. And uh, you, I read for you many of these verses. Okay. Which one you reject? Uh, I don't want to repeat again which of okay. these messages. Okay. I, I want to say fast. Okay. Those messages that you misunderstand, Nuria, don't follow them. Quran says don't follow them. In chapter 3, verse 7, that I was going to read it, okay, you didn't allow me. Quran says, those whose heart is corrupted, they follow just the unspecific verses. They don't follow the precise verses. Please follow the precise verses, okay? And What's the point of them? The point. So the point is that if you don't understand, if the verse goes against the precise verses, which has been mentioned 113 times in Quran, the most merciful and forgiving God, then you see that it doesn't go... Uh, you know, it doesn't ma match those precise verses, then don't follow it because I understand those verses that they are not what you think. Okay. I can't explain. Do you for hear you. what you're saying? Yes. Do you hear your that, logic? That, that, that's yeah. one of the dumbest things I've heard in a yes, long okay. time. I'm sorry. Same here. Yeah. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Well, you let's want me to on. read um, for you chapter let, uh, 3, verse 7. Should we let Rashid have a chance to answer that real quick? Yes. I mean, I uh, personally, I, I, I personally actually. A heard the question as if, as if it was rhetorical. So is there anybody who heard it as if it was rhetorical? Just me. Uh, because the question yeah, was that uh, uh, it was framed as if it is rhetorical to me that uh, people who are, you know, uh, in the village in Afghanistan don't understand the Quran and all of a sudden that means that it is bad. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. how I understood. I understood as if it was more like a jab at Nuria's point rather than ours but I, I, I doubt it I think it was pretty much a statement uh, pointing yeah. at the fact that the Quran is such a mess and it's it, it is at its core rotten yeah even though it says it's a clear book of guidance in itself but as perfect I will say it doesn't matter because somewhere else it says it's not a clear book we'll go with one of the ones I like yeah, the ones that I like are clear yeah no, exactly. It's, the ones it, that I like no, it, it, Yeah, it, in chapter 3, verse 7, it's uh, mention it clearly, okay? If you don't understand it, that's uh, your problem. Right? Yeah, well, it's, it's well, always our fault. It's, it's always our problem. problem. Because Allah, Allah can choose to guide who he wills and misguide who he wills. So it's Allah's will. It's not really our choice. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. All right. Let's let the uh, affirmative side have the last word on that just because it was for them, I think. But yes, please, sir. no five minute speech on this one again. Every question. Just okay. Yes, well, we'll seconds. Just then. All right. From, from Samir Farsane for $2, they say, do constitutions fight tax evaders? So okay. does 929, chapter 9, verse 29. I'm sorry. I don't understand. What? Do constitutions fight tax evaders? So does chapter 9, verse 29. Do is that is that supposed to be a defense yeah, because, of the Quran? I think because nine twenty nine. Yes, it is a defense of the Quran. Quran. Samir is definitely. Oh my God! Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Um, the U.S. Constitution, for example, or any constitution in our time, does not say fight those who don't believe in our uh, in our ideology, in our religion, uh, humiliate them, and so on, and and then give us reason that they simply don't believe in what we believe in. But this is what the Quran does. However, the Quran um, says very explicitly. Um, if you want me to to read it, I, will, I can I can read it again. I mean, it says very clearly: fight those who do not believe in Allah and His Messenger, uh, who do not accept uh, or who do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful, who do not accept the religion of truth, Islam, from those who were given the Scripture. Fight until they give the jizya, and jizya is not just taxes. Jizya is not a tax. It's not something that uh, everybody simply pays to the government. It is something that is specifically imposed upon uh, disbelievers, upon non-Muslims within an Islamic society. And uh, the amount of it, by the way, is unspecified. So Muslims 
can have their own charity and their own taxes, but the jizya is a specific amount of protection money which is imposed upon non-Muslims in exchange for their lives and their well-being. If they don't pay, then they are fair game and can and don't have to be protected and can be killed. That's the Islamic system. So that's it's not also taxes. Them to humiliate and subjugate them as well. Yep. Exactly. Yep. All right, and I, I can say fast that uh, Brother Rashid goes live every Friday as well, and I go every Saturday. <laughs> Those who have questions, more questions, and he has a video on his channel. He can share with you about chapter 929, explaining very well. And he explained it right now that it is not belief. It is those who have faith, okay? Uh, and uh, we, we don't want to go in it again, okay? So, please. Yeah. Yes, and I would like to add on that the, the jizya, no, it's not a tax. I agree with you, AP, on that. But I also don't believe that it is a, a sort of like a levied, payment that is placed on people for protection. I don't think that that is the case. I think that jizya is a compensation, comes from the word jaza, which means compensation or payment or repayment for reparation. These are payments of reparations that are supposed to be made by those people who were taking the money from the poor, from the people and consuming it wrongfully. They were supposed what? to pay this reparation. What? In the so world what? did you get, where is what the world? Did you get negative side have the last word? Not being Muslim. That's what it's my 90 seconds. Oh, Just let the negative side have the last word so they can uh, sure. listen for them. The negative N side. Nuria, do you want to go ahead? Or... Yeah, no, I mean, this is the first time I've ever heard that they're not spending money according to the state's wishes, and therefore it's a reparation. I mean, I really, uh, uh, okay. well, what uh, we the, said the, in a good yeah. way, so how, what are they doing wrong? No, I said that, that, that it's referring to the people who I mentioned in verse number 34 who are consuming the wealth of the people wrongfully. And those people, because they have consumed this wealth, once you have fought them and you have gained power of them, they have to pay reparations for that money that they took. That is the jizya. And they have to pay it according while they are sagirun. The word sagirun means to be made small. We, all of us, every single person is wow. sagir. I'm, I'm sorry, that is, that is simply absurd. Uh, oh, you, chapter, yes. chapter 9, verse 29 says, fight those who don't believe and humiliate them until they pay the jizya. Jizya was uh, unanimously accepted as protection money imposed upon uh, non-Muslims. The Muslim states, uh, as historically reported, imposed it as such. The Muslim uh, caliphates after Muhammad until the, the Ottoman Empire uh, imposed jizya as protection money in exchange for their lives upon the disbelievers. This is a historically known fact. Quran, we have so many... And humbled in no. the same yes, yes. And, and, and when, it, when it comes to the context that Rashid here is talking about, uh, in chapter 9, verse 34, it talks about... Uh, those monks who uh, or, or or priests who take the money of people unjustly is merely mentioned as a detail within the broader context of why those Christian of why Christians and Jews are bad. If you want to go that way, you could just go with the next verse here, given given as reason to fight the Jews and Christians. It says the Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah, which is which is by the way a completely ignorant statement, and the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths they imitate the saying of those who disbelieve before them may Allah destroy them that whole thing about taking the money of people unjustly comes many verses later within yes. the context of criticizing and bashing the Jews and Christians who should be fought okay yes, we need to move on now okay let, yeah. we need to move on because the next one um, ladies and gentlemen we do have more questions on the list than we have minutes left in the Q&A so um that last super chat from Paul Singh is the last super chat that I will guarantee that we will read, but I will try to push our uh, gracious interlocutors to answer all the ones that you guys send. But um, just giving you guys a fair warning right now. Um, so with that, here comes the next one from Zagros Ozkin for one ninety nine. They say uh, that's what happened. Oh yeah, we already read that one from Zagros Ozkin for four ninety nine. They say uh, Muji himself is. Well, I'm not going to read that. Um, um, they are alluding that you have uh, are a member of MEK and that they are not a good organization. Uh, okay. Joseph Smith level that. stuff. All right, and, okay. let uh, me child let me education. Yeah. Yeah. Let, me, not, let me let me fast respond to that. I'm not a member. I'm a supporter. Okay, and only just a few months ago, 50 Nobel Prize winners support oh MEK. There goes again. 50. Please. I can bring you. Ah, uh, yes. Jesus. You see today. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. You I cannot. You cannot hear the truth. 
about the organization that exists Dude, today. Dude, nobody that's cares that's about your organization. Can you so, please okay. stop propagating this nonsense cause, cause, so that people don't talk about it anymore? Them. Can you oh please stop them? I have been accused and I, I have to answer, okay? Thousands of Because you talk people, about it all the okay, time. You see, you, they don't allow They don't allow you to talk, okay? If they have the power, they shut you off, okay? So I say that we have thousands of European parliamentarians and American senators and, uh, you know, uh, uh, congressmen who support us. And I said last week, 261 support us. So don't come with I'll, these I'll bullshits, this okay? Don't come with these bullshits that I am, you know, my organization is this and that, okay? <laughs> Uh, Trump, uh, Trump, Vice President, Trump's Foreign Minister, okay, they have been supporting my organization, all right? So if you want, if you want, you can uh, have a debate with me on your channel, Nuria, okay, AP Runaway, okay? And bring your facts that my organization is what you say, okay? Bring a singer, sure. a singer, sure. okay? Shall we do that? Nuria? All right, let's move on. From Paul C for five dollars, they say AP and Nuria got them. Christians are to be fought based on their beliefs. Yeah. So you got fans out there, AP and Nuria. Thank, thank you. Uh, from uh, oh, that up. Uh, from hates stairs for five dollars. They say uh, to perfect, I believe perfect Dawa. Genuine question. Why do you support fascistic values? What? Why do you support Islam. fascistic values? Well, like what? Like what? Like when Islam, you, for example. Like, okay, that's... Uh, uh, that I'm the biggest enemy of uh, that fascist Islam, like Iranian fascist regime. I have fought it 43 years. My organization as well. We fought for non-Muslims, okay? We, and we, we could have everything we wanted. We, uh, we had no issue about hijab, but we fought against, we have lost over 100,000 of our members. My brother have been executed as well for these values. And I have been uh, on my channel. Everybody know that I am banned by this uh, extremist Muslim and fighting that fascist Islam that you are talking about. Okay. Yes. I, I sympathize with your feelings, but... Uh... It, it just keeps reminding me of that one question. Then why in the world are you here arguing with us instead of going and talking to Muslims? I and have said that I, I have said that they have blocked me. I'm doing that. I'm trying. I have asked. Did I ask you cause that organized uh, a debate with uh, Daniel Isis Jew with me? Did I ask you from beginning? Yes, they run away. But yes. Perfect Dawa, that shows you that they don't find your version of Islam credible. They don't consider that Islam. No, so they, don't they are running away. They are you should, running just, you should away. just leave Islam because yeah, Muslims yeah. obviously don't like yes. your version of oh, Islam. Okay. Perfect Dawa did uh, ask me to try to set that up, and I will try to set that up. So uh, yeah, if you, you. Uh, do see my link in the description below, look for that on my channel at some time in the future, maybe, oh, or okay. with another right. Islam uh, member of Islam, it, maybe. Yes, I appreciate um, it. But let's move on to the next question, shall we? From Coffee Mom for four ninety nine, they say uh, to Perfect Dawah and Rashid, if modern society didn't condemn mm -hmm. slavery and terrorism, would you mm -hmm. then acknowledge that the Quran says what it says? Um, I don't believe that the Quran actually supports slavery. There are uh, several verses within the Quran which do uh, uh, talk about the emancipation of slavery, of, uh, of slaves. Um, I, have, I also have a video on this on my channel, so if someone wants to watch it, I won't go into so much details about that. But the Quran has categorically dis, uh, uh, disallowed uh, slavery. It has uh, spoken... Okay, can you give uh, me a source for that, please? Thank you. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's talking in the story of Moses, he, Moses accuses Fir'aun about the idea of enslavement. And in that rhetoric in chapter 16, in chapter 26 of the Quran in Surah uh, Al-Shu'ara, I believe it is, um, in that, in that uh, conversation between Fir'aun and, and, uh, and Moses, Moses asks Pharaoh that, وَتِلْكَ نِعْمَةٌ تَمُنُّهَا عَلَيَّ وَأَنَ عَبَّدْتَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ he accuses him that this is the favor that you pretend to have done for me when you have enslaved the children of Israel. That this idea of enslavement, that is the whole story of the, cha of the story of the story. Where is there a clear prescription like that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that, that is that is that does, that does, that does not say it's not slavery. Let's move on because uh, that was a question for uh, yeah, Perfect Dawah. Let's just go ahead and move on. Yeah, chapter chapter 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, yeah, chapter 26, yeah, let me, uh, chapter 26, verse 22, chapter 7, verse 127, okay? These are uh, two of them, uh, and there are more, okay? That uh, Quran condemned slavery and is biggest 
crime of fraud. One of the biggest crime of fraud is enslaving people. Right? That's a lie. That's complete That's nonsense. A That's, That's a lie. A lie. Okay. Uh, we, we are giving you the, the chapter. We are giving oh. the chapter, okay? Yeah, if, okay, if it was our turn to talk, I would also give you chapters in which the Quran says that slaves and free men are not uh, equal, which the Quran clearly right. it, itself says. Uh, but but well, you're talking about something in which a conversation between Moses in his time yeah. and uh, the, the Pharaoh happens, in which the complaint is that the Pharaoh is uh, enslaving God's people. It's not about slavery being bad. It's about enslaving God's people. I can say, hey, don't kill my men. That doesn't mean killing is bad. I'm just saying it, it is bad for you to kill my men. Do you, do you understand the logic? Here? Well, it it, it know, never I says that slavery is bad. Rashid, even for you, I really want to ask you, what about how you, how do you feel about what the Arabs did to the Africans? Oh, Does that I not bother you before? Yeah, let like, me explain. How do you let me, that night? Let me yeah. Yes, let me ask. And I did watch your video on slavery. I, I loved it very much. Um, Thank you. It was very informative. And I can tell you that I do agree with about 98% of whatever you, what you talked about, except for the part about the Quran you know, allowing it. But I do agree that, yes, this thing about slavery, that unfortunately it's one of the greatest failure of Islamic history. It yeah, is yeah. A, a thing that uh, I don't believe at all that the prophet actually advocated for it. If I wanted as a person to actually uh, advocate for slavery, I would not include so many verses in my book, in my biography, which I believe the Quran is, which talk about freeing of slaves, freeing of captives. Why would I do that? Well, I wouldn't trade about... two black slaves for one Arab slave. It's in the Hadith. Yeah, but that's the Hadith. That's the thing. Okay, that's the yeah. Hadith. But when we're talking about the Quran, if there was, if slavery was such a big thing, why is there there is not a single verse in the Quran which talks about buying or selling slaves? By the way, the, the, the question... Okay, let's go ahead and move on from that. Uh, the question was completely okay, different, guys. by the way. Wasn't the question a different okay. question? No, Nuria asked Kaz, it was, the question Nuria was about uh, slavery and terrorism, but let's go ahead and move on. From Paul Singh... Yeah, Tom but Dallas the question was... Okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, explain how fake hadiths ended up in authentic hadith books that are supposed to be the sayings of God's final prophet and the one true religion. Uh, that's a very, actually, simple answer to... Simple... Uh, answer to give because uh, uh, hadiths are not written uh, on the background that they are the word of the prophet uh, no scholar okay i guarantee you no scholar in their rightful mind would say that these are the exact words of the prophet no scholar would say that you cannot bring a single hadith which you can take to a top scholar who would tell you that this is the actual word of the prophet why because all uh, hadith scholarship tells you the first thing you learn within hadith studies is how the, these are one. There are thoughts, there are, uh, if you can like, they're sort of like thought out, thought processes. It, it's not true. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not haq. It's not truth, actual truth. They can tell you that this is what we supposed that the prophet might have said. That's the highest they would ever go. No scholar would ever tell you that these are the exact word of the prophet. So to understand okay. how... The hadith came into false hadiths came into this hadith literature. It's because of tradition, ego, and also uh, uh, different practice and desires of people. That's how hadiths come okay. in. But Quran could not be changed to that level, so it has to go through the hadith because the Quran couldn't be changed to that level. So you have to, if you want to change about Islam, you have to go through the hadith route. You couldn't do it through the Quran. Can I just respond? Okay. I'm sorry to rush you guys. It's just that we have so many questions. Yeah, very fast. Very fast. You guys have time. Yeah, very fast. Very fast. Uh, okay. Very right. second. Please, yeah. please make it so, quick. So, yeah, some people wanted to put their wishes, uh, you know, uh, in Quran, but they couldn't like uh, stoning adulterers and uh, suckling uh, an adult. Yeah. That's why they made up hadiths for that. Okay. And they said even the verse came down, but uh, why it is not in Quran? Because it was eaten by a goat. So, that's why there were people who tried to, uh, you know, corrupt Quran, but they couldn't. So they added their their desires in Hadith. Okay, that's that's my response. All right. So you're saying God made that goat eat it because it would be yeah, corrupted okay. otherwise. All right, let, let's move on. <laughs> All right, from Church Apologetics class for five dollars, they say, why does the Quran say the semen come from the breastbone of women? <laughs> Ibn um, Kathir. Is that, uh, no, I don't think that the Quran, I, I know they claim that the Quran says that semen comes from the 
a backbone between the backbone and the rib uh, no it does not that you have to look at actually the arabic if you if you are, this is easier to explain to someone who understands arabic the thing about it is that when you see when it says that it emits yakhruju min bayn sulbi that that idea from between actually the arabic just says it comes out between the sulb and the taraib this is a euphemism for sexual intercourse it's not talking about I don't want to go into details but say euphemism about sexual intercourse the Quran tends to be very subtle when it talks about sex so that is also another euphemism about that it's not talking about the origin the origin of semen because why else did people castrate people already knew where semen comes from that's why they castrated by removing the excuse me the testicles because they knew of course they knew where semen comes from there's no point in in the Quran coming in and telling people that it comes between the backbone and the ribs where have you ever okay. seen someone being castrated through the backbone and the rib they knew all right so, <laughs> so. from church apologetics class for five dollars they say i'm going to write the Quran the eighth time since the seventh wasn't enough for muslims to understand peace be upon me all right from paul singh for five dollars they say <laughs> the the fact that we are disagreeing on the meaning of verses in the Quran means the Quran is not clear and concise as it proclaims. Thank no, you. Fact, okay, let me respond to that, yeah? Uh, and I have said that uh, I gave you the chapter 3, verse 7 that explain itself, okay? That why it is not, uh, you know, clear some verses. I said it before that this is how God has uh, decided. Uh, uh, I can say that uh, there is a planet that... Uh, uh, angels living there and everything is perfect but there are billions of other creatures and planets that things are different he decided to create us in this way he could send us now the biggest miracle and uh, the latest you know uh, version of quran or his message but he has decided to do so okay and he knew that because he wanted us to develop okay the, i see the beauty of the creation in this way maybe some someone else doesn't see it and want everything perfect right now everything should be perfect that's uh you know uh, you don't understand the the beauty of creation that he created us and he wanted us to develop okay thank you okay from pancake of destiny they sent a super message member message so thank you for that um, then from Fresh Fresh Stream, California. I'm sorry. From Fresh Stream, they sent 6.99 Canadian uh, for Perfect Dawa and Rashid. They said, "Can you think of any individual, organization, or country in this uh, world that should be targeted and fought according to the Islam? According to Islam?" Uh, uh, like you mean that? Uh, I don't understand uh, what. He meant organization. Is, is there any organization, person, or uh, country that should be fought according yes. to Islam? The oppressors. The yeah, Quran says many times in who in are the, the oppressors the, today? Yes. Uh, for example, I Iranian fascist regime is oppressor, and we are going to fight them. Okay, and we have been fighting them forty three years, and uh, we are going to bring them down very soon, hopefully. Okay. I agree. All right, so these are oppressor. Now, uh, Russians are oppressor, have attacked, uh, you know, Ukraine, and Ukrainian people have the right to fight them back, okay? So this is the, the answer, yes. Okay, from Samir Farsane for $5, they say, what is the punishment of military deserters? I'm in, I'm sorry, what is the punishment for military deserters in most countries? They're sort of uh, apostate prophets as well. How come you don't condemn that apostate prophet? Uh, <laughs> so, so um, the equation that is being made here is um, uh, apostasy is punishable by death according to Islamic law, according to Muhammad, and I criticize that. But uh, deserting the uh, the army is also uh, punished by death in most countries. So why don't I have a problem with that? Which is just extremely um, ludicrous thing to say for somebody who says that uh, a religion I, is I not, agree. a religion I agree. A, a religion is not an army a religion is not a a military force is not something that you are uh, there to fight it is a, something that you are brought up with in most cases uh, to believe that it is true and that you must hold on to it in order to go to the good place in the afterlife or if you don't believe in it you go, you go to hellfire and uh, being punished for refusing to believe in that or being punished for failing to believe in that being punished for uh, losing your faith and being put to death for that is simply unthinkably insane that's not comparable to what you are talking about although i don't agree with that either 
I disagree okay. with that. Yes, no, I no, no, also no, I'm sorry. Let's move on. I just want I'm to sorry. say I disagree as a Muslim uh, with that uh, you know statement that that question. Okay, this is okay, absolutely absolutely different. It's not military. Of course you do because okay. Islam is a political ideology. Okay, really, let's move on. From Azi schizophrenia, uh, Aziri schizophrenia for mm -hmm. uh, for twenty three ninety uh, myr, um, they say uh, negative in a relationship. Do you believe there is a leader? and there is a follower, or do you believe both sides can be equal? I, I believe that's for the... Is that for us? Or... The affirmative. I believe that is the affirmative. I didn't understand the question. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I think that uh, when it comes down to it, really, you can have certain cases in uh, relationships where uh, one person might uh, take charge over uh, certain things or might be responsible over certain things and another one might take charge over certain things and then the other one follows if uh, you can have sort of like that hierarchy but hierarchy spread out into different responsibilities i think that you can have that uh, i don't know if you can have you can have a happy relationship whether one person controls completely every single thing i don't think that you can have a happy relationship in that case, I think that it's uh, inevitable. It's going to be inevitable uh, for someone to take the reins in some things and another to take the reins in other things. But in the end, it sort of like balances itself out even through that. That's how I see it. Okay. And from Church Apologetics class for two dollars, they say, "Why won't uh, Perfect Dawah or Rashid debate Christian Prince?" Okay. Uh, can I answer? Yeah, Christian Prince. Yeah, let me uh, respond. I went to talk to Christian Prince and uh, this oh. uh, another one. Uh, uh, what is her name? Was I forgot? Both of them were such a disgusting people, and they were just attacking you, humiliating you. I was talking to a Christian Prince kind of half an hour. He was such a even my uh, brother in uh, Christianity, who is uh, admin on my channel. He also said that. He was absolutely terrible and he shouldn't treat you like that. I went like a, you know, like a human being talking to him. He just was humiliating. He was attacking, treat who? you know, me. Okay. Oh. So I cannot talk to such a people, you know, who are so aggressive. I was even asking him that your religion teach you to love people, even your enemy. What is this kind of, you know? treatment he was saying that oh he, he became muslim and said that yeah here in this verse of quran says that i ha uh, allah has put the hate in me so so i realized that i cannot talk to such a people okay that's why i'm not going to talk okay, okay. i can i can debate him on such a such a platform but not on his platform and from pancake of destiny member for three months they say to apostate prophet respect your courage to leave this cult thank you so much i appreciate it and from sugar goat for ten dollars, they say if Islam is not true, then why did Andrew Tate become Islam become a Muslim? <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, shout out to Andrew Tate. Uh, Andrew Tate uh, recently officially converted to Islam, and much of his reasoning is that uh, Christians don't follow Christianity properly anymore, and they're weaklings, and they're not tough enough, and uh, Islam is a it wasn't strict, yeah. tough, and misogynistic which, which is very, for him that he found it. Which all is very fun. funny. Like, <laughs> did you ever see Andrew Tate as a as a good Christian? No, but now he turns oh. to Islam. It is is now uh, for his reasoning. He also says that Islam is a strong religion which doesn't uh, tolerate things left and right, and that is good. And it also treats women like dirt, and that's that's why he loves Islam, of course. So there goes Andrew yeah, Tate. Yeah, an obedient wife, and also he's yeah. banned from like every social media platform. So remember now that. He He's a Muslim. He's got the power of the Ummah. And if people try and ban him, he can cry Islamophobia. So, you know, he needs the following. He needs the Muslim Adawa boy kind of hype. It's perfect for him. I think this is a match yeah. made in heaven. I said it before. I, I completely, I wanted him to convert to Islam. So I'm very pleasantly surprised by this. I think he fits in perfectly, his personality into Islam. Oh, yeah. All right. From Karma's Real for $5, they say team negative. What's your foundation for objective, moral, right, wrong values? If the Quran has bad values, what are your grounds for judging morality? Um, 
yeah I don't mind so for me morality is not something that's like static like it's 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 a lot more dynamic and we just like as humanity as we evolve and progress as a society the same way that cultures evolve our morality will have to bend itself to fit the current like worldview that society holds which is the whole reason for a debate like this is that the Quran itself has basically made us stop in time and be a hundred and sorry years ago because those were the morals of back then and they're codified in this book and we're expected to just say, oh, this is objective morality. I, I, I just think religion should not hijack and have a monopoly on what mora, mo morals or morality is, sorry. So yeah, I think we are actually moral um, despite religion, to be honest, despite the Judeo-Christian values, just despite Islam, we have gotten to a better place thanks to the enlightenment and secularism and this push for this, always in the face of religious backlash trying to keep us backwards so yeah in, in the same way that today uh the lgbtqia plus community is enjoying rights that they didn't have you know 20 30 years ago the same way that more like human humans progress and that's the same thing in the same way we see the law develop in in general countries as well we see like case law and precedent develop based on what the needs of the hour are for society yeah, I can say um, I agree largely with uh, much of what Nuria said. Um, I would just say that I don't. I don't think morality is. Uh, I don't think there uh, there are objective moral values. I don't think that morality is something that can be, or, or that even requires to be seen as an objective truth. I think morality is entirely a human construct developed out of the necessity of living together within societies by humans, and. Um, and I also think what I focus on there is that people strive to be well. People strive for well-being, to uh, live in well-being, and to then look for uh, what is best for that end and what is uh, not good for that end. And based on, based on exactly that desire, they come to different moral understandings, <clears throat> even though they may create different moral theories. Uh, with that and based on those i would say islam is definitely not good for human well-being hmm. okay from zagros Azkan for 199 they say rashid how could islam fix humanity explain the steps yes uh islam can help with uh, i wouldn't say islam i said the quran so i would change the question there a little bit i said quran not islam uh, yes uh, the quran can help because though as i said in my opening that though uh, we can arrive at these good values for our well-being without the Quran. I do believe that 100%, and I agree with Nuria that morality is not static. But I do uh, take the, the that just because we can, it doesn't mean that there can't be something that we can lean back on. Something like, for example, you have like a constitution. Though we know that we are not supposed to do these things, it's good to have those things in the background, like to, to have them on paper or to have them codified some way. So the Quran is sort of like that. And I think that the Quran does not contradict anything that can, uh, you know, can allow, for example, uh, uh, us to reach well-being. So anything that can uh, make us feel well or, or achieve well-being within society, the Quran will not contradict that. So uh, whether it is done, it's, whether well-being is achieved through Quranic Quran or whether it is uh, achieved through other values, I think that the objective is the same. The Quran seeks to build well-being. That's its purpose. That's its point. And uh, so that anyway, I hope that I do not go all around. But I think that the Quran is sort is just a codifier. It's just codifying what's already there. These values we could have reached them without the Quran. The Quran oh, was. Yeah, not, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Okay. That the Quran is just codifying them for us. We could have arrived at these values without the Quran. I agree with all that. Right, last... that. It's good to have a codifier. Something cancer, that codifies. Let's be real. The Quran is the cancer that needs to be cut. It's not just the. Uh... <laughs> that's the root of the problem what it codifies anyway sorry no problem okay the last two uh questions uh before i gave the warning are here uh pancake of destiny for six euros they say why did allah order to fight people of the book in surah 9 verse 29 i already explained that yeah, uh, you have explained. It's, I, I don't want to repeat it again because of time i think maybe okay. if there's another question i would rather take that great 
from Paul Sink for five nine five dollars. They say, can you explain how slavery, right hand possessed women, and mm -hmm. child brides are good? Quote unquote. Um, Perfect. Dawa, you want to take this or should I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can take the slavery and, uh, but yeah, you can uh, talk about. No one wants the slavery. No, no, <laughs> no. I can say yes. I can yeah, say because but the slavery right. we have already talked yeah. about it. Yeah. The slavery right. we have already covered. Right. It. Who's yeah. take there is no yeah. child child bride in Islam. In, okay, in, in in Quran. Yes, please. Brother yes, Rashid. in the Quran, the Quran does not talk about this idea of child brides. It, yes, I am, yes, it does not mention a, a particular age for, but it calls for Rushd, that there has to be sort of like this mental, uh, uh, mental maturity sort of, nope, uh, that's like that is required that's for a lie. person in Surah okay, let, let him answer. And, uh, um, no, so that is sort of like, that is sort of like a requirement, which is also required when you are, are dealing out money, for example, for the inheritance in Surah Al nisa um, As for the slavery, I've already talked about that, that uh, the Quran does not, a call for slavery and I asked the question before to both our opponents today that if slavery was such a huge thing as you guys are blowing it out to be why is it that there's not a single verse in the Quran which talks about buying and selling slaves there doesn't have to be a verse in the Quran which yeah, talks about buying and selling and selling been. no there hasn't if there you, wanna, if you want to happened. ask if you want to ask a question and get a response, please let me respond to it. Um, if the Quran doesn't have to give clear instructions on how to buy and sell slaves, it is sufficient if the Quran, for example, uh, talks about uh, women uh, that you may uh, have besides your wives, besides your marriable wives, that, uh, that you have captured or that uh, are held by your uh, right hand, which is something that refers to captives of war. And uh, the Quran also says, as I mentioned before, uh, Allah gives a parable uh, and it says um, that a free man and a slave are not equal and Allah has given some uh, better, uh, you know, uh, benefits or blessings than others. Yeah, it, it look kind of, kind of confused. So let me pull up the, the, the verse, but you, the you can verse respond to that. Chapter 16, if, uh, if, uh, also, I think, Rashid, that I, I know you're trying to trap us here, but it seems like a bit of a cop out because, yeah, the Quran doesn't have loads. I mean, we could we could argue everything. Then the Quran has basically no verses for women's rights. So why should I yeah. think that Islam has women's rights? Right. But when throughout Muhammad's lifetime, I'm sorry, you have to be freaking blind to not understand in his lived example how he was dealing trading and raping slave women constantly yeah. and I mean, especially the... from your heritage to be trying to defend slavery and say that it really makes me like i didn't defend it I, did, I didn't defend it nuria no but yeah, you have to say like me, oh, if it was such a big yeah. deal like why nuria. did you not mention nuria. over and over again nuria. even if he traded one slave and we yes. know this from the hadith no, even no. if you want to ignore it he mm. traded two he thought two black slaves were worth one arab slave even his you go but to hadith. He never says an, a non-Arab and the Arab okay. superiority. Let he me say, this is about Quran, Miriam. This is about yeah, Quran. Yes. You are Let mentioning me, something I, outside I, of I it. And I told you, I don't so. agree with that. No, let, me say, let me say that you Nuria, are relying Nuria. on the lack well, of slavery no. in the Quran to overlook Nuria. the slavery in Islam. That's what no, I'm saying. Nuria. Guys, and if we're going to keep on talking, how about just another question? question. Yeah, one, one can, can, can I have the, more questions? No. Can I no, give the one. verse quickly to uh, yeah, respond to Rashid? Let, let me yes, say, yes. she said, Nuria said that there is no, uh, you know, uh, talking about women's rights in Quran. Chapter 49, verse 13 says, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you people and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing uh, the right? all of it. So the right, the, the the right is that, right. yeah, the right is that, wait, wait, the right is that you are best in the sight of Allah of about <laughs> any right, no. my yes, friend. so, so if, right. if we now if we now give you if we yeah. now give you a response with the verse which says yeah, that, I, uh, I, 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 that that men know. are that men no. are in charge of women and that may, women should be obedient you will then say no, oh that's an true. unclear Quran verse no. and people like okay. you follow unclear Quoran verses that's that take another I time. Want to hear the verse yes that that's take give another us the verse AP 
What? Okay. Oh, the, uh, Quran chapter 16 verse 75 says, mm -hmm. Allah presents an example, a slave owned and unable to do a thing, and he mm -hmm. to whom we have provided from us good provision. So he spends yeah. from it secretly and publicly. Can they be equal? Praise mm -hmm. be to Allah, but most of them do not know. So it describes yeah. uh, a slave and a free man as unequal beings and says, look, can they be equal? No. So they, like this, Allah also gives uh, you know provisions to some of you and not to others of you. So uh, it's, it's explained as a very casual thing within the Quran, as opposed to the Quran ever saying that slavery is bad. Does it ever say that slavery is bad? Does no, it does ever, it, does it yes. ever talk about it as a normal thing and justify it? Yes, it does. No. I can give you a verse, for example, which views it as a bad thing. You, you will talk about the whole Moses and Pharaoh no. thing, which we have established. No, is not I have about... about 10 verses that have to do okay. with okay. Show me, that tell idea. Me. But tell is that me. good example, enough for you? Oh, okay. No, tell me, tell me. What, Let's what's the verse? Let's just move on then. Let's just no, move no, on. I mean, Please give me the verse. What is guys, it? Uh, Perfect Dabba is doing an after show. So, I mean, you guys could take it there. We do want to, I mean, I don't know if you guys have anything you want to do. If you want to keep it going, I don't care. But I do have more questions I want to ask, though, yeah, okay. if you want to okay. stay here. Bye. Just because they did send uh, their super chats for money. Uh, uh, from Ar from Arden uh, Rami for two euros, they say, in which context is it okay to strike your wife? Okay. Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, different maybe opinion, okay? Uh, according um, uh, some scholars and some interpretation and my interpretation, it does say that leave her, okay, there is no strike. And the next verse clearly explained that if you fear that they separate because he has left her, okay, then send uh, uh, somebody from her family and his family to bring them back together, not, not from the same room because uh, if... Uh, Where, does the case, Where does it say that? Where does it say that? This, the next verse is that uh, oh, well, chapter right. 435. 435. Okay. After 434, okay, first it says that, look, it, uh, it, it is uh, logic that the, uh, um, in the past people were, uh, women were just slave, okay, they were, didn't have any rights and I could beat my wife to death and even they do today. I have in three months in, in lockdown in Mexico, 1,000 women were killed in domestic uh, violence. So in that time was even worse. Japanese men, they had the right to behead their wives if they were, they, you know, disliked them. So Allah doesn't send the final messenger of God. I'm beating my wife. And then the messenger of God comes with the final message say, oh, my servants, beat your wife. Okay, I'm doing that. I don't need you to instruct me. So Allah came. And as a husband, I know that the second step, step that which says that separate your bed, uh, you know, uh, ease the, the, the situation because I know myself that day after I come down. And oh, I my start, God. Please, oh, okay. Man, no, please, wait, wait. Please. I'm explaining. Yes, I'm explaining that. I think we should move on to the next question. Okay. I say I can yeah. I can give you I can give you it's verses. Just... Now. OK. All right. So yeah, we can right. do it. Uh, we can do it next uh, on my channel. After have... After one. Yeah. OK. Yes. Uh, from Samir uh, sent another ten dollar super chat and said Islam ordered them to pay the jizya because they don't pay zakat. Uh, Abu Bakr, if any Muslim refuses to pay me a rope they use to pay to profit Muhammad, I'll fight him for it. So you can see the fairness. But that uh, that uh, story is regarding certain people, uh, certain people who had uh, sort of done this uh, thing called the Rida Wars. Uh, uh, as they are known as in the history books, that they had uh, left Islam and they had refused to give zakah, and that hadith is sort of said in that context. That That's because the perfect these example. Muslims, that these Muslims had uh, refused to to pay uh, the, the zakah, and uh, as a, as a result, so Abu Bakr was he right? I don't think so. But uh, uh, that in his in his uh, decision, he de he before he decided to go to war with them because he considered it as going against the state. So he viewed it as such. So he get, so that's why, for example, Omar objected to it and said, "Hey, would you really fight these people even if they already say the La Ilaha Illallah Muhammad and all that and they pay, they they pray?" So uh, and he, so in his mind, he justified it. You know, uh, that way, I'm, I'm not sure if the story is true or not, but that's what uh, is in the Hadith literature. 
Also, so, Rashid, um, sorry, just a quick question. In the Quran, it says that uh, the, the first portion of the zakat should go to the poor people, the miskeen, and mm -hmm. the um, the new converts, like or the reverts, as Islam likes to say, to mm -hmm. Islam. But do you not think that's a little bit like of a bribing tech like tactic that anyone who converts to Islam, if you're poor, especially like you're going to get this much of the money first? Like, what's up with that? Well, uh, I, I mean, I think that all the different categories that are given there are also the categories that are given in other places. But for example, that that verse in Masadaqatu lil Fuqara'i wal Masakina wal Mu'allafat the thing that you're talking about Mu'allafat qulubuhum wa fil riqab that uh, and also inclining others to the path of God or oh, to to inclining, inclining the path, you know, inclining to others. So, yeah. So people have, yes, so people have understood that as these people who are going out and spreading the message, that they can live off that, you know, that money. Like so Muhammad for me, and Ali Dawah yeah. living off their dawah. Yeah. So that, they, that they, because if they, it's, it's sort of like, for example, when you have in old Christianity, and this is not a, a sort of like, you know, what about is or whatever, but it's sort of like that just to understand it. Like, for example, you used to have missionaries who would go out, Christian missionaries who would go out and they would be sponsored and supported by the actually the cleric or the group or the organization that they were from. The organization would collect this money. And of course, those missionaries, because that was their job, that was what they were doing. They were going out, spreading the message. So they would live off that support. So I think that uh, that is what is being talked about in that particular part of the person. Awesome, okay. thank you. And from Zagros Ozgan for 199, they say, let's talk about uh, Banu Kurazia. I put it on the screen there for you guys. Banu Kurazia is a uh, was a Jewish tribe that, uh, like every single tribe in Medina, Muhammad's uh, city, which he took over, was uh, massacred and eradicated uh, based upon the a suggestion that they uh, that they uh, committed treason. A little correction: the other Jewish tribes were not all massacred. Some of them were expelled. So, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, bro, bro, the, no, no, it's uh, okay. The, there was a question. Okay, just uh, AP explained. Brother Rashid, would you like to address it, or shall I do that? No, you can take it. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, that's a. Uh, uh, already when the story is talking about different situation, different numbers, okay, is, uh, you know, uh, suspicious, okay? And if, uh, first of all, uh, they say that um, Prophet Muhammad gave the, the, you know, the decision, the judgment on, I guess, uh, one of them, you know, the Jews themselves, okay? Despite Prophet Muhammad, First of all, Allah says that to his own prophet that do not judge people because the best judge is Allah, okay? And the uh, uh, Quran talk about uh, how to treat the prisoners of war. They were prisoners of war. So if he did that, first of all, he was, Prophet Muhammad was the best judge there, okay? And he didn't judge them himself and he gave it to somebody else. Itself is totally, for me, it's a, uh, you know, lie, a big lie. And if it really happened, which we were talking, Brother Rashid as well, then Prophet Muhammad went against Quran because Quran clearly says, and I have, uh, if you Google uh, the laws of war in Islam, it tells you clearly that you have no right to kill the prisoners of war, okay? So they were prisoners okay. of war, okay? That's, that's, that's Is it story. better than the men's? Okay. I, I doubt it's better than the Mandela prison rules. Have you heard of the Mandela rules for prisoners of war? De La Rose, I don't know what is that. I, the I, Mandela I, Rose. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. So from uh, Zagros Ozkan for 199, they say, why couldn't Muhammad's wives remarry? Uh, <clears throat> I th uh, Should I take this one or do you want yes, to? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I think, uh, I believe that that has something to do with the, uh, with, with the time, or with the time, or also it can have something to do with the idea of marrying a leader's wife for example that was something that was frowned upon at the time uh, and also when you read through the different traditions you can see that um, but also this idea for example when you have like a king's wife you don't typically have uh, that wife being married off after the king dies like it's it sort of I mean, it, it, I think it follows in that sort of, in that idea. Like, for example, it was considered sort of like of a 
low character, for example, someone to take on. So for the sake of respect to the prophet, yes, the prophet did, uh, or, or, we, or we, we were supposed to give the prophet certain a respect that we don't give others. For example, we hold the prophet of a, of a higher standard. That's true. And uh, because of this respect and reverence we have for the prophet, we don't, uh, or his wives were forbidden to marry. But the, the traditional understanding of that was because there were certain groups from the Munafiqin who were saying to the prophet or who were saying to the wives of the prophet that you just wait when Muhammad dies, we are going to marry you. Like when you look at the, the Tafasil, that's the reason they give, that these men were saying to the prophet uh, to the prophet's wives that you just wait when muhammad dies we are going to marry you and we're going to do whatever we want with you so basically that so the quran sort of like didn't even respect the prophet's daughter i'm sorry sorry, the rightly guided caliph didn't even respect the prophet's daughter well i I mean i'm I'm not sure about that this is is such a weird excuse to say that that it was there to protect his wives, but well, but, but, but the, the protection here is to forbid his wives from marrying after him. Yeah. That's so uh, weird. I say that the reason that is that I say that the reason it's not my reason. I say I gave you two reasons. I said the reason that is given within the tradition is this, and I gave you my own to start with. But the reason that is given in the tradition is that there were certain men within society who were. Uh, okay, okay we heard we heard that, but it's just, it's just absurd. Yeah. It's just absurd. Yeah, yeah I, okay. you can take that so, if you. Especially when they can't respect his Last daughter question. enough that they can, t- <laughs> they can not marry his wives out of respect. Okay, sorry. No, no, no you're fine. Okay, last question from uh, Zagros, Zagros Oskan for four ninety nine. They say, we have moral intuitions because selective pressures were such that mutations that yielded the neural proclivities for moral intuitions were selected. Nice, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, no, okay. Well, awesome. Thank you guys all for the spirited conversation and discussion. So with that, let's go ahead and close out. I uh, just want to thank you all so much for this discussion. You guys are the lifeblood of the show. I want to thank James for creating this platform and uh, hosting these debates. I uh, love these debates so much. This is my favorite thing. Uh, I want to let everybody know uh, about, one more time, the Debate Con 2 coming up on November 19th, Saturday, November 19th in Plano, Texas. Get the tickets while they're still hot. Link is in the description below as well as the fundraiser. We are still uh, trying to get that fully funded. So please help out, James, so we can get that off the ground. Plenty of debates coming your way. And uh, just want to also say thank you to the moderators in the chat. Uh, anybody uh, for helping to elevate the conversation. And thank you to everybody who sent in super chats and questions. Um, once again, Perfect Dawa is doing a after show. Um, I believe he invited everybody here to that. So I don't know if anybody's going to be showing up to that. Uh, if I do go, I will take any of the questions that weren't asked uh, from the uh, Q&A with me. So maybe I'll get to ask those. Uh, yeah, and, then, and then also... And then I, yes, I go live every Saturday, brother. Rashid mostly goes live on his channel Fridays as well. If anybody has more questions, yes, you are welcome to discuss. Can I say something? Awesome. Sure. Yeah. sure. Uh, I would say well, thanks, everybody, um, first off, for agreeing to this. Uh, I want to point out that this was Nuria's first debate ever, I think, right? And yeah. uh, it was great, fantastic, good job. Oh, and I would I would suggest everyone to go and subscribe to her channel, which is uh, Holy Humanist, especially those who follow my stuff, since I have been very inactive lately, so you can follow somebody who's more active uh, <laughs> instead. And, thank you yeah. so much, AP. This was so much fun as well, tag teaming with you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Rashid, perfect now, you guys were great, uh, although very intellectually dishonest but great <laughs> yeah, I, I think Rashid was very good but i will i will never have, never have a debate again with perfect yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem if you yeah, guys will take I, a second real quick to say last word go ahead yeah. <laughs> yes uh, i would like to say that uh, thank you very much for having me on uh, this is my second time appearing on modern day debate oh. um so i'm very i'm very happy that i was uh, allowed to come here and and uh, talk to you in a wonderful individuals um ap great stuff as always you are a challenge, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but uh, I, I do like the fact that, uh, as you know, as the debate was going on, that it went a little bit south, you know, right there when you were screaming at each other. But we, me and Nuria enjoyed that, um, <laughs> I think. so. But uh, I have to say that I, I prefer to stick to the Quran. So uh, not that I deny the hadiths. I don't deny the hadiths at all. 
um, but I prefer to stick to the Quran because it is the prophet's thoughts. It is the uh, the uh, the prophet's you know behavior. You, you can't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why for me, I decide, for example, to stick to the Quran. Uh, you might see that as intellectually dishonest. Uh, that's fine. I would say the same thing about, about you guys, unfortunately. But that's the way it is in arguments. Um, uh, yes, as Brother Muji said, I do do uh, live shows where I go through the Quran on Fridays. Um, so anybody who has any questions about uh, some of the things that we discussed today, they are very much welcome. There's so many things that I wanted to bring, especially this issue with the slavery. I wish I could get in touch with uh, AP or Nuria, one of you, to discuss more about this, because it looks like we didn't cover that, uh, that part as well as we wanted to. Uh, but I wish that you guys have time, for example, to have a discussion with me on this uh, Inshallah. 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 Yeah, right. I would like to also thank you, uh, thank uh, uh, Modern Day Debate for hosting this uh, debate. And uh, I would like to say to Nuria that the judge people before, you know, when you talk to them, the accuser should be also, uh, the, the accused one should be also involved. And you have questions not saying that, oh, you are, uh, you know, uh, you are under investigation and we are not going to talk I to you. I never said that. Yeah. I just didn't no, have yeah, any yeah. sympathy for uh, all I Yeah, Harris, Harris said. Harris said that. And I don't have time to investigate you. Uh, uh, you know, Armin said, I'm, I'm so I just it. believe I, you. I'm okay, okay, okay. So I'm Let's start a new conversation. Okay, Let's so anyway, yeah. yes. Anyway, Where so we going I hope up? that we can talk more in the future. All right. Thank okay, you. sure. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank yeah, and one more thing. I just wanted to say that I'm also going to have a after show on my channel after Perfect Dawah's after show. So if you guys wanted to join me on that, that would be great. I'll uh, have the questions that were not asked as well. And there'll be an open mic. So if anybody wanted to jump in there and have a uh say something about the debate then that'll be great too so with that just want to say like it if you loved it share if you want to spread it and subscribe we have many more debates coming your way speakers are linked in the description below so check them out if you liked what you heard tonight apostate prophet nuria rashid and perfect dawah all linked in the description below please check them out thank you everyone have a great night and remember please keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable have a great night good night thank you good night thanks sir. Good night. Thank stay you. away from us I go yeah. live now. I go. Stay